Dragons. Here we are. Here we are once again. Let me turn them on because otherwise they complain and they're, they're quite important for the, the session. Hello and welcome to this week's um, episode of uh, Mithras, uh, a role playing game set in the campaign world of Odess. The rule set is all about based around a percentile dice. Um, there's no classes or races and basically there's four types of magic, um, sorcery, um, animus to do with spirits, um, thesis to do with gods and there's also mysticists uh, as well. Um, the combat is quite lethal and deadly and and also very precise and the game includes a, a variety of role playing aspects and skills so yeah the a, a party last week um, actually finished off an adventure and after rolling various dice and improving their skills actually came back to lindo the ta the base town where they lived and did some various um, what I think we can also call as personal storylines. I, I think that's what it was. And they went out and did various um, things in Lindo before the the next adventure set forth and they got their new ideas etc so in order to, for the characters to introduce the players to introduce who they're playing tonight they're also going to give a, a brief outline um, of what they actually got up to before they actually um, became um, involved in the new quest and as always we go down the same line as um, sorry I'm pointing the wrong way as the thing so I will pass on to Mr Longshanks EPG Hi guys, I'm Longshank CPG. I, as always, play Hengist. He is the group's heavily armoured sword, swordsman, um, yeah, sword shield, that sort of thing, um, of noble birth from another land outside Odist, um, and has come over to Odist and Lindo on a quest to find his sister after his sister was um, kidnapped by a secret order. Um, last week, um, or last, last, last time, Angus was trying to help the party, not very successfully, in trying to locate Briar, who is um, the daughter of a local lord that we've had dealings with recently. And we came to Linda with her um, in carriage and she sort of arrived and then we went off and she disappeared. So he was wandering around, not really doing very well. I thought, oh, no, I'll go to the rich people's area of Linda because that's, that's where she probably is. So he was wandering around, didn't really find her, thought, Let's knock on the only contact I have in this area, which is Ica McDuff. She wasn't in, left a message, um, and then that's about it. Yes, uh, excellent. So we'll pass on straight to uh, Mr. Pickles. This guy. I'm Mr. Pickles. I played Barlaby Fumus, our team's theist. I serve the white moon goddess Amriel, and I got myself into quite a bit of a pickle. Last episode. <laughs> um, I, I, my, my goddess normally gives me powers of protection and healing and uh, removing poisons, so I'm not really a fighter type character. And after trying to research uh, the third item in a trinity of items that we're searching for for our main quest, I, uh, I found a, a mysterious figure at the, the door to my, my church bedroom, and I thought I was about to be assassinated and pretty effortlessly on the assassin's part since as i said no fighting capability all i can do is put up a shield and scream <laughs> for help but it turned out to be the the lady that that hengus was looking for bria was at my door and i thought that i had been giving her romantic eyes because we think that she is wearing the third item a golden torque around her neck um that would complete our trinity of magic um so i'm trying to figure out a way to patch things up now that i've told her I only love my goddess out of a panic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I was going to be killed, and then she's trying to flirt with me. It's not the right time, in my defense. And with that, I'm going to pass the microphone on uh, to Medivac. It was a very interesting <laughs> encounter, if you ask me. It, it was, um, yes. It's Fifty Shades of Interesting. <laughs> yes. um, so, I am Medivac, and I play Hazrikan. He is the group's 
tracker, scout, go-to combat specialist, I will say. Um, he's a nomad from the steppes, and he joined this group after doing a, a service for a count in Lindo. Uh, now he's back here. He joined a brotherhood, which is... Um, rather a, a good brother that keeps track of the population move and how nature affects or how, how everything affects the area around um in all segments all biomes of the world um he recently or uh, last time he, he met with his law master who set him straight on a few things about the accuracy of what he must report um about certain things his last adventure um you know the the, the Batrakians who were, who were as far as he was concerned a peaceful race but um, for some reason were now acting beyond that um he also advanced to a novice or um yes a novice i would say um he was giving a tooth of a jaguar yeah that is true. as his totem in a sense um uh, with that, I will pass it on to Chugga Wugga. Hi guys, I'm Chugga Wugga. I play Gulliver, the apprentice sorcerer. He is enrolled in the Order of the Kraken, which is one of the four sorcery orders on Odis. His um, order specializes in spells involving around communication, transportation, and teleportation. Um, what did I do last week? Um, well, after coming back from the swamp, in, in, in the swamp, Gulliver had um, managed to um, get himself a artifact of one of the frogman shamans. Um, it seemed to give him various abilities. One of them was to actually enthrall um, the frogman and um, make them do what he wanted, which is basically what saved them um, him and the rest of the party um, and let them made them their escape from the swamp. Um, when he got back to Lindo, he thought he'd probably better try to find out a bit more about the artifact, a bit more, if he could, on how it was linked to the Chaos Mother, mm -hmm. and also how um, the sorcerers might be involved in it. Um, he found out that the um, the egg was an artifact, um, one of several, he, he thinks. Um, and the strange thing was that whenever they were mentioned in any of the texts which he found out in the Order's library, they were always referred to as he's, she's, they's, rather than it's. Mm. Um, he also found out um, about a, a race of... Um, a race called the um, the Greater Race, um, which may have been linked to these artifacts. Um, he did um, ask um, Bartleby about these um, to see what information Bartleby knew about them. But it's still very vague where they where they from, where they came from, um, what they were doing. Um, he also asked about, um, he also found out about sorcerers and um, found out that there was actually four renegade sorcerers, one from each of the orders. And um, those sorcerers' names, which were Hemes, Tepius, Mikey, and Vol Volbin, Volin, Volin um, were the same names that... Um, uh, Finiel had left on the piece of paper um, mm. for them when we were trying to um, track down um, where this um, chalice was, which was um, interesting. Um, he also went to see whether or not he could find out any information at all about um, Bria. And the reason he did that was um, he was trying to he was trying to see whether or not he could get um, an idea of how she might have come into um, owning the um, the talk, which is round the neck, which is one of the three items that we need to get to the Oasis mm. of the Sanctuary. And um, he was he was going down the route that maybe it was um, passed down from her mother and from her um, from her mother's mother, etc. Um, the two bits of information that we got from that, both um, from Gulliver looking into it and from Bartaby looking into it, um, were very um, conflicting. Um, um, Gulliver 
when he went in, the family tree was all there. It had the it had the birth of um, Bria, etc. Um, and the information that um, Bartleby got was was a lot different from that, which we haven't really discussed in great lengths yet. That is um, correct, yeah. And that was it. The only mysterious thing that I had was when. Um, when I had finished doing all this and we were going back to meet up um, in the, the Harry Hobgoblin, um, Gulliver heard somebody call his name and um, didn't see anybody, um, which was a bit strange. That is correct. Yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. So that's it. So the um, party then um, went off to meet uh, a very popular, a very caring, a very sincere man who lives in Lindo, which the party have had several encounters with um, beforehand. And this um, guy's name is Sylvester McCoon. He's a cartographer and he's quite um, bolshy and no knows what he likes and knows how to actually get it and he actually um, encouraged the party to meet uh, a scribe of Count Bastion who actually is sort of like the leader the mayor of Lindo and um, Carathus um, the scribe met them in a, a a, a more upbeat tavern than the hairy hobgoblin um, where he told the party that um, they were to go off and start to try to search for um, a, the, the temple of the chaos mother and beforehand um, two rather suspicious looking people had been to the library of Camp Bastion and sorted through the books etc and there was if you remember there was one book or one scroll missing and Kalathos was quite happy for you not to collect that he seemed to be a lot more um, focused on um, finding out the the location of the temple of the Chaos Mother. Um, now from your last known um, um, discussion with Carthos, um, you had found out that there was a secret to the location of the Chaos Mother's temple in a, a villa, um, Lucius's villa, which not alone a lot has been known about or from, from quite a, a significant period of time. Anyway, um, he agreed to pay you, I think it was 4,000 silver pieces, for you to go off and actually um, get the information. And you drove a hard bargain and you actually, um, well, requested and demanded and got um, a horse each, which you can see these are now below you in your on the first um, screen in World 20. So I think I've set it up right that you can actually rename them. Um, so if you um, if you go to the little cog on them, can you go to the cog and you should be at, can you see where it says name? It currently says, yep. Yeah, uh, you can just change it uh, buttonable <laughs> it's my favorite horse <laughs> well don't get too accustomed to it <laughs> Diddles. Oh. and hasra has gone for the popular copy of a draft horse which has a <laughs> which has sorry, uh, has a just, a you found it no, I've been dense. If you click on the token. Yeah. And, then, and then click on the little. Oh, I talk. see. Thank you. Yes, you got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you can remove the name and redo it and it'll pop up. Horse. <laughs> you could have been more, a little bit more creative and spelt it with an A or something like that. As in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Excellent. So th those are your um, um, horses. 
just to let you know that they're they are nothing special they are roughly average run-of-the-mill um, horses they are quite in quite good um, condition and they will allow you to um, journey a good amount of time during the day um, but you know they, they will need um, resting and feeding etc and anything to do with that is based on your riding skill so obviously if somebody has the highest riding skill then they will actually be able to care for all the horses if they see um, fit now at the end of gulliver's um talk you were saying that you haven't actually all got together um to discuss um what's going on etc in your next steps and i'm aware that some of you still want to um do something in lindo if you remember at the end of last session i told you to make sure that you were all prepared that your backpacks were full and you had bought anything that you needed to actually buy so that um should be um all done and dusted so i'm going to move you over um, to your favourite tavern, um, the Hairy Hobgoblin, uh, where you are currently uh, now, and sat at your normal table. Okay. Uh, one thing I didn't buy um, was um, grain, etc., for um, the my my horse. That's a very good point. Yeah. Okay. Then, so you you can actually um, buy um, sacks of grain if you wish. That well, it's more oats that. Yeah, it gets um, yeah, fed to them. Um, but um, the, the horses will naturally um, eat grass as well right. on the way. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, so I just well, I just want to make sure that I've I've got enough um, enough food for the for the horse. Yeah. Do we know how long um, approximately how long it's going to take us to get to um, the several the... days, depending on what happens on the way and whether or not you keep your horses right. So right if, we, if we get sort of like a week's a week's horse food. Yeah, I, I think um, that's we'll just fine. With grass, so. yeah. uh, I, and Gulliver also wants to um purchase from a local um vendor um a several apples and maybe a carrot as well. Yeah, that's uh, that's absolutely just, fine. Uh, That'll just be like the rough cost of, of a meal. Um, yeah. Max later in the chat, uh, Bartby says, I don't understand all the words, but Bartby better destroy some thoughts. Yeah. I don't know what that means. It's a little bit rude. All oh, right. Okay, then. So, yeah, I said I would pass it on to Bartby. Um, yeah, so um, um, your, just to let you know, your horse comes with saddles and bit and bridle, etc., etc. So, you know, and reins, you, you don't need anything like that. And you're probably, um, if you want to purchase um, saddlebags, you've probably already done that, if not. But please do, do keep, uh, if you are wearing um, the horse got saddlebags, etc., please do make sure that on your equipment list, you've actually put on where your stuff is just in case just in case your horses suddenly bolt in the middle of the night you not know that they would do. Uh, not that they would do of course uh and but we, we'll see how it goes anyway so you're um you have decided to um set off um tomorrow morning um early you know get a good um a good start on, on the quest your horses are stabled in the heavy hobgoblin stables already and of course various of you are staying either in the hobgoblin itself or at your church or in your orders thing so you've sort of like come together let's say that you are having a lunchtime meal okay so you'll have the rest of the afternoon and evening if you so desire to fulfill anything else that you would like to do um between now and setting off to lucius's villa so yeah um anybody can say anything whatever they would like to do um, yesterday before we actually went to 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 to, to the meeting I, I i did have a word with um with, with Basil, I'm, I'm a bit concerned that I'm I'm carrying the, the seed round with me, and I'm also now carrying this artifact. I'm going to call him him um, as well. And to be honest with you, there's been several times that we've been captured or could have could have lost them, and I, I don't think I don't think it's wise for us to be carrying them about anymore. 
that's a, that's a very good idea, Gulliver. Um, it was a close run thing that we didn't lose them when we were captured last time. Yes, I, I think they were after the chalice. They were looking for the chalice more, more than the more than the artifact, which which is a weird thing in itself because that would say that the the because we we're assuming that the, the necromancer is is after both of them. But perhaps the necromancer is, but his uh, minions or underlings who captured us didn't recognise it or didn't know about it. And so, anyway, I, I, I don't think it's, I, I, I don't think it's very safe for us to um, be carrying it around anymore. And no, no offence, about to be, but I don't want to in, to entrust it to the to the temple for for safekeeping, because they, they've they've already got two of the Fabergé versions of it, and and also the one that Ben has. Oh yes, that is true. I think somebody gave it to Ben for safekeeping, and he promptly skipped town. So I I had several ideas. The, the The first idea was to was just to go out somewhere with, I don't know, with maybe Hengist and a shovel, and, <laughs> Sorry. and just and just bury them, so somewhere that only we knew about, or or even just me and Hengist knew about. And then, because the, the least people that know about this location, the safer that they're going to be. So I just thought that we, we could, and I had to take Hengis because I didn't want to dig the hole myself. So that's my first idea. But Won't then they suspect thought, you, Gulliver? You I don't. The, the sorcerers of the orders and what with all of that, wouldn't you be the most likely of our group to be selected for torture for knowledge of where those might be located? Oh, I never thought of that. That's why I would have taken Hengist. Hengist is tough. He can just to fight let, off torture. Yeah, just to let you know, um, torture resistance test is willpower. Oh, yes. <laughs> you got so much. <laughs> so so, 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 so what, what's willpower? What will, Hengist, what's your willpower? You, you don't want to know. <laughs> it's sort of like, it's all like tell us about, yes, okay, then it's over there. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they get a critical has gone to sleep. Oh no, he's woken up again. <laughs> I, just, he was just, he's no, I, I was wondering, um, he's going to tell Hengist is that after he's buried him or? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll bury you with it, Hengist. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. I'll look after it. So, so that, that was my first idea, just, just to go and, and bury it somewhere. But, but then I thought, well, what was if we, we lost if we forgot where we had buried it or whoops, if somebody just followed us from Lindo and then dug it up and, and took it away after we had gone. And then I was thinking, well, surely we can't be the other, only people in Lindo or on even on Otis who's having the same problems of having something that they want to keep safe. So I thought, if anybody's going to know, Basil's going to know. So before the meeting, I, I had a word with him and said... I, I basically said, Basil, if somebody had an item that they didn't, they wanted to keep safe and not have anybody find it, and they needed to entrust it with somebody, where would they go? And and Basil said to me that he that he knew the place and and he would he would look into it and and get back to me. So that that's where we are. We, there's there's two options. I have a. Basil comes back to us and with, with with some way that we can... Gulliver, you can assume that Basil has got back in touch with you since then, so you will know the name of the um, the um, group of people. Um, so if you want to share that with the group, then you're, you're quite welcome to. Was it the fraternity or yeah. the fraternity? The fraternity. Fraternity, yeah. So anyway... Just before we sat down, Basil got back to me, and he he said he he knew a place. It was called the 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 fraternity, and they they specialise in 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 keeping objects, items safe and sound. And the 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 thing is, they don't lose anything ever, and they they don't tell anybody that they've got it either. Because, well, if they did, 
they wouldn't be in business anymore. So those are our two options. We either bury it or we use the fraternity to, to keep these safe. I, I personally think we should use this fraternity because if you bury something in the ground, people will inevitably find the item because disturbed ground is quite easy to find. Yeah, that happened and, to me once. And at least if, if the fraternity lose this item, we do have a point of contact to go back to if that does happen. I'm just um, Bartby just rolled his um, history role there to see whether or not he knows anything about um, the fraternity. Um, yeah, um, Bartby, and I assume that you can decide whether or not you can going to share this or not. Um, the fraternity is a quite a, a secret order. It's a group of people who um, keep secrets. That's basically their job. If you've seen um, the um, Dan Brown book, um, Inferno, um, they have a sort of like uh, the representations that are out on the ship um, that are completely off the grid. They have the fraternity has no loyalty um, to anybody apart from itself. And as Gulliver has mentioned, uh, it's in its best interest not to share information or anything like that because its main strength is not doing that and because it doesn't do it it built up quite a reputation and um, Bartaby you do know that it's it's not um, the most popular um, order and it's very much a case of people um, especially in the church um, doubt its um, morals um, and sort of like how it conducts business and the fraternity would never take sides it's completely neutral in everything although there are rumors around for that um, dictators have fallen or you know tribes have disappeared because of a certain small amount of information that the fraternity might have leaked either accidentally or on purpose to um, certain high up individuals that have taken a, um, taken advantage of it. Although that has never ever been proven. And the majority of the time is that most people acknowledge that if you want keep kept something kept secret, then the fraternity is the um, group to talk to. I will share that then um, with everybody. So, so Hasrus, Hasrus says one for the fraternity. What's what's other people's views? Sounds like a, a good option, but there's obviously going to be some cost involved. But we can probably meet that. That's the other thing. I mean, you probably be all remember, but 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 last time we had to, last time we had to make a a, a group donation. <laughs> How do you remember these things, guy? <laughs> it it came out of it came out of my pocket, <laughs> and although although Bartaby was very kind to to give me what silver he he had, I think he was the only one. So I I I, I think this time it, it has to be decided now that everybody is going to make an equal donation, Hengist. <laughs> we 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 have the we have the four hundred silver pieces, which was down payment from the from 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 the count. Well, not from the count, from Caliphas. Was that his name, Caliphas? Yeah. Which is payment for this thing. Anyway, sounds like a good idea to use that as a way to secure the safety of the certain items. You okay the about to be? You seem a bit distracted. I, did you notice? I have problems. Sorry, did oh. you notice that Martin's in the bar tonight? What? Yeah, yeah, he's no, he dodgy. <laughs> I just thought I I point that out because. I... Well, it's all right. Dominic's not here. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was, that, that was 
been, I think that was before you arrived, um, Bartleby. Uh, um, Martin, uh, the, was it? Hasra. Hasra, yeah, sure. sorry. Hasra's looking very stoic. I can't, I can't no, decide whether or not. Typing. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, is he playing? Sorry, is he no, playing? No, no, I, I was replying to a text. Is, uh, text on my concentration to put some. Uh, yeah, it's not a game. He kept on lighting um, up when he's when his mobile phone screen. <laughs> yeah, so, Sorry. Um, Ma- Martin here was the one who took a fancy to Dominic the Barbarian, um, oh. who was very big and broad and everything and he took rather i think these three people down here were part of the um the original caravan trade yeah, route they were indeed. When you, they were the leaders of, yeah yeah when yeah. you went off to do um, in search of the caravan mm-hmm. i get some really good names this one's called yeah. in search of lucius's villa <laughs> yeah. so and i had a dnd adventure once called in search of silver yeah. Which was the actual metal. Yeah, so anyway, so what, what's the plan, guys? Well, I, I was... Gulliver was just getting... Oh, yes, you were seeing what Bartaby thinks. I trust the dirt more than an organization, but I would be willing to chip in for the protection of... But, 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 but don't you think it would be wise just to keep them two separated? Because the, there's already one at the temple, and we, we can't... Well, we probably can trust the, the, the sorcery orders, but with these four renegade ones and I was meeting them in the the den of the vipers and I... yes you know I, I take no offense so you never know what can happen in the dead of night um so it's decided then is there anything else that we need to give them i i, I thought we would just give them the coffer with the seed in and we would give them this this artifact that, I mean, that, that we got what more could we offer that we need protected. So, should I try and take my mask off, Gulliver? Do you think? I'm, I'm sure you've already tried that on several occasions, but because it's several years. Around with that, I, I personally wouldn't tell them what these items are either. I would put them in a in a chest, perhaps, or if we could purchase a chest from somewhere and 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 then give them just the chest to look after. Well, the the the, cough, the the seed is already in a coffer, which is magically sealed, um, to stop it to stop it leaking. But we, I, w- I wouldn't want to open that to put this one in. But we we could maybe, I could maybe wrap it round in a. a, a we could probably get a small crate or chest and, and put it in and, and just have two chests. Yes, unless it's fraternity for thingy. Maybe they um they, they provide boxes to put them in. Maybe maybe we we are overthinking this. Let's just go to go to the fraternity and, and see what they can do. I just don't know whether you... not we go to them or whether or not they come to us or, 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 or how we meet them. I'd have to talk to Basil about it all. Well, just as you are talking, you notice a bluebird comes in, which, if you remember, are the messengers uh, yeah. around um, Lindo. And um, one comes straight up to your table and um, puts a piece of parchment <laughs> on the on the table. And normally, if you remember, they sort of like hang around for payment or some description. But this bluebird just sort of like literally puts a piece of parchment down and then turns around and um, leaves. And Gulliver, you um, pick up the piece of par- parchment. It's actually folded into four and there's a rough map. Um, of it and it's sort of like it's quite obvious that it's the streets outside and you can see where um, the hairy hobgoblin is and there's an arrow sort of like pointing south and then you can see that there's three little alleyways and then the fourth alleyway has a star next to it and it's next to that is is drawn um what appears to be a horizon line with the sun below it and it just sort of like says four and there's a picture of um a bell next to it and you recognize this is that um that'll be the almost like the fourth hour after sundown um that and it, it seems to be um and sorry down in the um the other corner there is just uh what you recognize as um an f and um, quite stylized but definitely an f almost like illuminated you know but it it looks it's probably more of a stamp or some kind of um um engraving that's been inked over and pressed rather than 
done naturally it's quite illuminated with you know sort of like curled bits of um vine and things like that and th this piece of parchment obviously has just been um given to you and the bluebird doesn't wait for anything um he just sort of like leaves it's a map it looks like the fraternity have contacted us maybe maybe well, basil's already had a had a word with them no, I, I know nothing about the fraternity. Maybe, maybe we should just follow the instructions on these scribbles on the paper they gave you. Well, it's got an F on it. It must be from them. It seems quite um, interesting that once your party actually decided that it was, you know, they were going to be involved in some way, then that's when the bluebird actually came in and delivered the, the note um that which may suggest to you something but may not so that that meeting will take place um on the evening so you got the rest of the afternoon and i think bartaby you had something that you wanted to um get up to uh yes but i need the advice from a from a cohort and we're all at the table and mm. barley is sulking uh uh, Bar will be a look up though and say to uh, Hengist, "You, you know much about love, ladies." Some parts of it. Why? I, I need um, advising, of sorts, um, uh, with uh, s some confidence uh, or, or uh, you know, um, some protection for those involved. Of course. I, 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 it's just a private conversation, or is, are you whispering, or be, between you both, or oh, across the um, table? I'm, I think yeah. they're, they're across the table, so you could probably Gullivan and um, Hazra. You can hear this if. Oh, wonderful! Yep, yep. If you want any protection, my friend, I, I know a good. <laughs> uh, it's, it's it's quality, and, and you want you will not sire any children from this. It's wonderful. <laughs> That's not quite the problem, Hazra. Ah, <laughs> uh, my apologies. I will, I will, I will, I will take my ale. I, uh, well, I suppose we're all adventuring cohorts. We've been kidnapped together, and unless you would rather um, step outside for a moment, last oh. bit, it's a bit embarrassing. Yes, you, you notice that Bartleby's. Um, metal face mask is slightly starting to heat up <laughs> perhaps my friends if you, if you take a chair over in the corner you know over here together perhaps you know if you wish to discuss this amongst yourselves as mr hengist i'm sure is a man of the world been in the guard at one point I, I, well i also know a bit about love let us discuss cheese my friend you can tell, teach me the ways of the wise of this, <laughs> these different colored pieces in these cheese white things. Oh, what are these blue bits? Master, he, Master, he taught me about love. Oh, I went. Oh! Uh, yeah. <laughs> Trust many Max, go there. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, Angus, let, let us go go talk yeah, for a moment. I, I of course, you need, you need to know. Of course, Barsby and um, Angus will stand up, taking his tankard with him. Um, Barlby, of course, will follow, uh, despite Gulliver's protesting. Yeah, uh, well, I, I think you have control over your character, oh, so yeah. you can. Where where is the? the I guess I'll go over here. <gasps> Next to the over door. There. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Go to another empty table. Angus, you know about nobility and noble ladies, and I don't know exactly how I'm supposed to react to things, and I expect... With great care, Bartleby, because they are easily offended. I should have known that uh, ahead of time, because it appears that Bria may think that I am a romantic interest. She uh, ambushed my chambers. At the, last night, 
I thought I was about to be assassinated, to be fair. She was wearing a cloak, and I kept imagining the stories we heard from the villagers of the, the necromancer and the cloak, and she was wearing leather gloves, and I thought that they were claws. And before I could call upon Amriel to protect me, she revealed herself her affection for me and I turned her down. <laughs> the number of euphemisms that I'm in here. <laughs> Briar came in my chambers last night. <laughs> what? what is that? She revealed herself to me. <laughs> <laughs> carry on, please, carry on. <laughs> so she may have left very upset and I have her leather gloves, I believe. Um, I... I I would be very careful how you. Um, well, the the first question is, do you, do you have feelings for her back? That's that's the question. Well, obviously she's a beautiful lady, but it gets worse. I I tried to explain why I was looking at her, and I mentioned her necklace because of the the Trinity, and now she thinks I was only after her money. That's that. Yes, that's that's not going to help at all. Um, I think the first thing you need to do is is, is find her to apologize um, profusely. Maybe um, a gift of some sort. To... What kind of gift could you get a noble lady who has Lord Dreisden as her father, allegedly? It would have no, to... I was going to say allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> it would have to be something with not necessarily material worth, but emotional worth either from you or it's, it's, it will have to have a token a, a, a good token of um of your <laughs> it'll have you to just yeah. give a ferret. <laughs> it would have to mean something coming from you as opposed a to a token of your undying something. affection give her a kitten so no. <laughs> <laughs> give her your mask and say if you can get it off it's your <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> I think in that case, the Cassini would be the one who would win that. But that is a. Uh, you're right, Hangus. I, I should get a gift of sorts for her so that maybe she'll listen to me and hear my apology. That's, that will be a good start. And it might be wise to not grovel, but apologize profusely for how you reacted and have some sort of reasoning as to why you reacted the way you did and then apologize again that usually works well you're the expert hangus i, I trust <laughs> what you say is just true oh you, you should have gone to gulliver gulliver's got <laughs> you should have been divorced <laughs> hangus did have his own um romantic involvement last adventure as well well half romantic involvement so so, yeah, <laughs> you were sending te uh, sexts, sexts, yeah, messages scrolls. scrolls, that's scrolls. it. I think the scroll, I think the scroll went one way. I'm not too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is this our Valentine's Day special? Well, it, I was trying to hit the 14th, but uh, can, anyway. can, can I just say, oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um. Well then, Hengus, I I best make haste before we leave. I should see if I can find something to leave as a gift in the meantime. Yes, it might also help if you know where she is staying, of course, so you can reciprocate the feelings. Indeed. I think I know where she might be. Really? <laughs> She's under his bed. <laughs> she is tied up in the... <laughs> Let's hope not. Just... <laughs> no, 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 no. Let me free. Oh dear. Thank no. you so much for no. to Uncanny Adventures who's just shared 500 love heart beats bits that are oh, oh, in, in the chat there. So yeah, thank you very much. Am I still number one? Uh, no, you're not. What the hell? <laughs> thank you very much for that, Jeanette. Much appreciated. <laughs> okay then. Um, so, so Bartleby, uh, are you planning on heading off to try to find um, Briar then? Um, trying to find a, a gift of sorts, I guess. And I'm having a poor time thinking of ideas. But uh, before I leave, I, I tell Hengus to let the others know that I'm uh, solving a problem. Okay. No problem. Can I just say, out of character, this could have very easily be solved. 
you could have arranged to meet Briar, you could have arranged to meet Iker, and then you could have both gone in hand in hand to meet both of them. <laughs> that would have been over. <laughs> Alternatively, you could have quite simply chopped off a head and taken a talk. And yet you, you could have just met by a tree and barked at it. <laughs> yeah. It would have been, been sorted. Just get a really pe long piece of spaghetti and see if she's at the, at the other end. Yeah. Be fine. Okay, then. So, Bartleby, you're off um, shopping? Um, yes. Yeah, so you're you're looking for a romantic um, gift of some description. So, okay. Is, is, is he going to ask um, the others what they think is a romantic gift? <gasps> oh, yes, please. Well, I, I, I presume you know, that Glover has yeah. knowledge, but right. I'm looking for knowledge of nobility. And I figure that Angus... Something classy. <laughs> no, so, classy. So, and anything that's non-yeast product. So is it the case that, um, Bartby, after your discussion with Hengus, you're just going to head off into town to try to find something suitable to buy? Yes, and my yeah. budget's around 200 silver, so I'm going to pull yeah, up the book. Yeah, I do think you have a commerce skill. I do. Yeah, so I'm quite happy for you to roll your comment commerce skill now let me just say what's going to happen here the the higher the score you get the more appropriate the um item will be so it's not like a bag of holding do you know the, the random table on the uh, oh that would have been uh... you, you you gift her a carrot <laughs> 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 yeah, sorry, like, um, a gorgon's head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, that would um, be pretty romantic. Uncanny, Uncanny Adventures is um, paying her bill and then heading off. So she has now left the bar. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do, you'll roll your commas. So say, for example, you succeed only at the very easy level, then that's a poor gift. If you actually um, succeed at a formidable level, then that is close to the perfect gift. Blind roll, please. Blind roll. Um, oh, God, yes, please. Yeah, it has to be blind roll. I, I think the, it has to. Does the blind roll actually work? Um, I'm trying to remember how to blind well, roll. I, I'll, do a, I do a, I'll do a blind roll. What is it? Slash uh, beat roll. Let me have a look. Um, bu, 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 bu. I don't think I have a blind roll set up. Uh, yeah, it's a capital or exclamation point B roll D100 skill X. Yeah. Mine's yeah. my notes today. Cool. Well, it has, to, it has to be a blind roll, surely. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm quite, I'm quite happy for it to be a blind roll. I'll try to keep up my poker face. No. <laughs> Sorry. Did, did you roll it? Uh, no, I was no, looking through my notes. In. My bad. Um, my. Oh, sorry, commerce... I, it said it says that Gulliver was rolling it. I want. No, to... I um I was seeing whether or not I could do the whether or not the command was there. All right, so here it goes. If it comes up yellow, then we know it's only come to me. Oh yes, I can see it. I see nothing. Yeah, you will see nothing. Okay, then. I see young love. Yeah. Okay, so you um, search through the, the stores and the sort of like the street markets, um, Bartopi, and you come across um, something that... Uh, how much were you paying for it, sorry? Uh, my budget's 200 silver. Okay, so you, you find something that is not quite up to um, 200 um, it's about just it's about 90 silver pieces and it looks like um, some kind of um, nightingale bird that has been fashioned out of some kind of metal. It doesn't look like it's silver or anything like that, but it does look quite shiny and you quite like the workmanship of it. And it's a bird that it seems to be like almost like a brooch um and it sort of like has the bird and then the their feet are sort of like attached to a um a branch and the you you hackle for uh haggle for a while and um, just roll a normal commerce um skill or bartering do you have bartering at all i don't have bartering but i do have commerce okay then that that's absolutely fine um just roll your um commerce skill for me <laughs> Um, can I use a point of luck? Um, yes, by all means. Yeah, so 
Yeah, and you actually get it using your point of luck to reverse them. You actually get it for exactly nine ninety silver pieces. There's a bit of haggling uh, over it, but and you you're quite quite pleased with this. And because you um, did a standard roll, he even um, throws in for you what appears to be a, a velvet pouch for it to go into as well and you're you you're very pleased with this you think it looks very stylized and you know nightingales seem to be a very um good um object to you know to sing like a nightingale you know the purest of voices in the sky etc if you want to write that down and use it when you serenade her then that's absolutely fine um yeah so yeah so what what would you like to do um, with this um, silver nightingale. Um, well, I'm going to try and find Bria now. Um, and how since time you, is of the essence. Yeah, how would you like um, to do that? Mm. And tell you what, we'll leave that with you so you can have a think about it. And I'll just go back to anybody else. Gulliver, I presume you're going at night time to meet the fraternity. Am I going by myself? I don't know. That's why I'm <laughs> asking. <laughs> Well, oh. the, the, uh, 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 when no, Balter B goes out and... Um, and Hengis comes back to the table. Yeah, Hengis comes, comes back to the table. wants to. Wants, he's going to be... What, what, what was that about Hengis? It's, uh, it's, it's not of a important... It's, it, it's not an important matter. It's, it's, um, Balter B had just some questions about something. But he, he was asking about that. Nay, no, no he, 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 he didn't know what that was about. No, no, it's, that's fine. Um, no, I heard him. He asked about love. <laughs> yeah, it's a strange thing. Please send the love. Maybe it's love of, of the god or love of an initiate. You never know these days. <laughs> so. um, but Hengist is also going to say, um, he's going to ask, when when are you wanting to meet? Uh, because I've, I've got an errand to run as well. Um, when do you want to meet? And I'll meet you here in time to go to the... You're hiding something, Hengist. You've changed the subject. You never <laughs> change the subject. <laughs> and we'll well, as, as, as you know, um, I, I, um, I come to go and see Ica. You Mac can um, roll... Um, insight. You roll insight, and Hengist, you need to roll deceit. <laughs> <laughs> this is not going to go well. Oh! <laughs> oh, and you think not? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You, you I, I just want to go feed... My horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, um, Gulliver, you're quite happy with what Hengis has um, said. You know, it's it's um, absolutely Plausible. Fine. Yeah, very yes. plausible at the moment. Sounds good. Um, so I'm going to, I, I'm going to quickly go and see, um, pay a visit to I, the Lady Ica Macduff. Um, I'll meet you here at sundown. Does that, does that leave us enough time to get to the fraternity? But yeah. what, what did the message say from the fraternity? Was there a time frame we were working on? Did you say? Did, did you not see the map? I, I cannot read these things. You, you know this, no, my friend Gulliver. There was nothing to read. It just has lines in it. Look. Oh, but there's no time then. That's fine. Well, no, look. If you have a look here, see, see this bell? That, that, yes, that's, that's a bell. bell. I can see a bell, have, yes. Have you not heard the bell when it when it gets to sundown and the bell rings and the gates close? Oh, <laughs> right, and, and and no, and I, gen I generally sleep outside the gates a lot, hunting and trapping. But okay, then. Do you not hear the bell outside? No. Oh. <laughs> okay. I but sleep with my fingers in my ear. <laughs> Wait a bit till after sundown, and then we've got to go to this location on the map. So as Gulliver right. and Bart, um, Gulliver and Hasra dis, dis, um, discuss this, um, Hengus, you can um, leave the hairy hobgoblin. Uh, what's your plan? Yes. So um, Hengus is going to um, head up to the Lady Ica's, um, but he's going to stop by if there's like a flower, a flower stool of some sort. Um, and pick up a, a nice bunch of nice bunch of flowers. Yeah, that was cool. Roll, head up to... um, blind roll your um, commerce skill for me. This is going to go as bad as well. As, I don't um, think you have a commerce skill. Yeah, it I, could be worse. I, I don't have a commerce skill. No. Um, professional. What, what do you want me to roll instead? Um, in which case, we'll... Um, 
if you just roll a 1d100 and we'll I'll, uh, I'll take it from there that hopefully should work uh, nope exclamation mark is it space b roll no exclamation mark b b roll don't think ah. any spaced 1d100 yeah drop that a nice round number. Um, Thank you. Yeah, um, excellent. Yeah, you you seem to um, pick up um, there as you walk around. There's um, a, somebody selling flowers, and there's quite a big container of these um, blue flowers, and they they look extremely um, healthy and or really huge leaves are on them and petals on them, and definitely giving off a very scented um um fragrance uh, into the air and you you sort of like see see them and sort of like talk to the um guy and the guy behind the um bar sort of like seems a little bit um concerned or, or not concerned a little bit shocked that you want to buy something as grand as this um but he sort of like gets to sort of like sees the twinkle in your eye and suddenly realizes that they're not for you they're for somebody else and he happily um triples the price um hands them over for a couple of silver pieces and you you feel you've got quite a big bunch you know uh you just sort of like think i'm not going to go half hog here i'm just going to buy the whole thing and he's very um um, pleased and you sort of like head off um to the the noble and there, there's quite a lot of women uh as you walk down sort of like um looking at you um as you go past with your braided hair and carrying these um shield on one arm flowers, <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, with your flowers proudly held in front of you, um, and you head don't off drop to the guard. Don't drop him. At him don't drop him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So you you head off to um, um, Ike and MacDuff's um, house. Yeah. What would you like to do? Um, so he'll approach the the front door uh, and and knock. Yeah, and if you remember, the um, the footman normally answers and he sort mm -hmm. of like um, opens the door. And if you remember, he doesn't open it all the way, just like a little thing. And he sort of like stand, sees you standing there and sees you sort of like clutching your huge bunch of um, blue um, flowers. And he sort of like looks at you and says, uh, yes, can I help you? May I ask if the lady, um, I Macduff, is is in residence it's uh hengist she um sent a message to invite me for one moment sir i will go and um tell the mistress that you are here and she's he sort of like goes off and he shuts the door and it, he comes back um quite quickly and then when he opens the door again you notice that he's slightly um out of breath as if he's been running and he says uh, yes um um, Mistress Macduff will um, meet you um, in the, the drawing room, sir. Um, please come this way. And he sort of like hobbles off and you sort of like carefully um, follow. And he takes you to what seems to be some kind of parlour room that has some um, chairs. It's almost like a dining room. And um, he sort of like says, please, uh, please um, stand or be seated, sir. And the mistress will be um, in um, shortly. And he's, he sort of like bows and sort of like um, leaves, goes out and closes the door um, behind him. Um, the, the room looks quite well um, organised, but it, you're a bit disappointed, um, Hengus, because it doesn't seem to be as grand as when you remember it when you were first here, if you mm. remember. And it looks like um, you notice that there's some blank... Um, different coloured um, gaps on the walls and it looks like um, some of the, the furniture looks like it, it's no longer there and you, you're sort of like looking around when um, all of a sudden the, uh, the door opens and the butler's there and he sort of like steps to one side and says 
uh, the lady of the house, um, Mistress Ica Macduff, and Ica sort of like comes in um, with um, what appears to be a, a very sort of like um, translucent um, robe, um, and she sort of like um, flows in. Um, in a sort of like quite a, well it, it's quite a, a sort of like a noble way and she sort of like floats in a held head held high and her auburn hair sort of like goes she's not dressed for battle she's obviously dressed um, for um, seduction and she she comes in and um, yeah what would you like to do um so Hengist will um, sort of like bow his head and say, um, good afternoon, my lady. Um, and then he'll sort of like present the flowers and says, I uh, I brought these for you. And she sort of like comes in and he's sort of like, here's, here's, and she sort of like looks down at you and you notice that her, her eyes widen and she looks at these flowers and you, you hear the butler says, I, I did mention it to you madam and she says she turns around to you and she, she says you bring me blue lilies the flowers of death how <laughs> dare you and to think that i was going to ask you to be my husband at, at that hengis will sort of like um quickly sort of like remove them from her her sight and say my uh, my apologies my lady um that some of the the customs here still elude me um i just saw nice flowers and thought of you i didn't realize their customs meeting you do not have a heart worthy of my desires and you are tongue-tied as well Again, my humble. Obviously, apology. your brain regards in your resides in your biceps. I will um, remove them from your from your sight, and then he sort of like hides them behind his 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 back. Do not kind of bother removing them from my sight. Remove yourself from my sight. That would be a much better idea. On second thoughts, remove yourself from the world. That would be even better. And she sort of like whooshes round. And there, as she goes around, she disturbs the air. And there's this sweet smell of rose petals. And lavender comes in. And you, you suddenly realise, Hengis, that she's made quite an effort to this. And even when she flicks her hair, you notice small... Um, petals of roses topple out of it um uh, over the throne the, the butler sort of like bows and she she um turns to him as she goes out and says get him out of my sight and she sort of like storms off leaving behind a turbulence of perfume and petals um as she sort of like marches out and the, the butler sort of like um, stands there for a while and just sort of like um, says, I'm sorry, sir. I, I think it's probably best that you go now. Yes, of course. Um, and then Hengis will, will make, take his leave. And um, maybe um, remove the flowers with you. Yes. That, he sort that of like says, idea. and as you sort of like walk past him, you hear him says, well, the youngsters of today have no idea of the court, how to court at all. It is gone from the world. Blue lilies. I, I, I was hoping you were going to say that she was holding so much for a silver bird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which nicely takes us on to Mr. Bartleby. Uh, I'm not scared to go into my... You're my date now. Can I just say I've had a whole week to think about this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so is Mr. Hang Kittles. on, hang on. I've got an outfit to put on. No. <laughs> 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 a bit of cosplay, I thought. <laughs> no. We'll leave, we'll leave you alone now. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I didn't hear that, so. Yeah, nothing. Oh, <laughs> God, say it, say it. <laughs> what did he say? I didn't say anything. I'll just have to play it <gasps> back. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Uh, yes, Mr. Bartleby, where, whereabouts are you going? Um, the first stop is the church because I recall seeing her uh, mulling about there after our first encounter there. Um, so I'm going to go to the church, see if she's there by any any rare chance. Okay. Um, if you roll for me, hang on a minute, let me just get this correct uh, before I do it. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. If you, could you add, add together for me? Uh, da, 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 da. I'm just trying to find it and I can't uh, see it. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. If you multiply your um, power by five, and then roll that. 14 times five would be 70? 70, yep. So just roll a 1d100. Um, the reason I'm using that is because that's what luck is made out of. That's what how you get your gotcha. luck points. Big money. Uh. Yeah, you sort of like um, look around and you, you see the, the odd choir boy there. So I sing her, um, but that's about it. Uh, there, there's a few um, bag ladies roundabout. Um, but you can't see um, Briar there at all. Oh, that is disappointing. In that case, I'll have to go. Do I know where she lives or the... No, the the only thing that you know is that if you remember when you arrived in Lindo with the carriage, yeah. she was taken off to somewhere unknown. They sort of like dropped you off and then she went off with the carriage and that was it. Oh, well, that... Gave me only one option. You could um, you could leave word for her here, if you wish. Hmm. You could give one That's... to one of the um, initiates um, in your church. No, 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 no. Save yourself a briar. Mm. <laughs> that was good, actually. That was quite quick, Hasma. I know. I know. No, he's been thinking about it. He's just. He just... Yeah, <laughs> he's been thinking about it all week. No, no, no. He's got no. a list. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing. Um, <laughs> I'm playing the bingo of um, you know innuendos. Yeah. So yes. So you you can if you wish leave it with an initiate um, here um, with strict instructions. Before I do, um, do I know the general uh, rich part of town, or does my character know? I should say. Yeah, you uh, because you sort of like have lived um, in Lindo because you're part of the church, etc. Yeah. Okay. So um, you you know uh, up on the hill, yeah, that's where the rich people live. But you're not too sure if she's there or where she would be in there. You here's could, my general plan then. Yeah, um, I'd like to go to that area and and walk about and just kind of aimlessly search if I can. And once it hits a, a certain time um, in the evening, I'm going to try and uh, before sunset, I guess, I'm going to try and meet back up with the group at that point. Um, and then before we go, if I haven't found her, I'll leave instructions with my church. Okay, so roll your um, your power again. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you take? Are you looking it or leaving it? I'm gonna luck it. Oh, these luck points are going. Just, yep, and I'll have one left that I can save for when I'm getting my arm. Or his major off. wound. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Broken God. heart. Yeah. What was it that you didn't use a look for in a couple of adventures ago? That I thought that, something. Yeah, saving Hengist. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I yeah. should have. Saved yeah, we all remember that. We all remember that. Yeah. Shield of shield of you will not take damage. Yeah. yeah. So so yeah. yeah. So you you're sort of like walking uh, a lot of around the um sort of like the noble area. And, the little children. Yeah, and the, the, you're getting quite a lot of strange looks, and um, various sort of like nurses and maids are sort of like doing that bit when they sort of like um, shield the child's eyes um, from you, and you hear somebody um, say, "Don't stare, he's unfortunate," you know, <laughs> and like like that, and you just sort of like going out, and you're sort of like aimlessly walking along. And then um, you hear a voice, and it's, it's a man's voice, and it says, Master Bartleby, 
and you look right it's not yoda sorry it just sounded a bit like yoda and you notice that it's the um wagon driver and he sort of like says oh, what, what what are you doing here in the, the the rich area the noble area of the town oh yes I, i'm normally more often in areas that need my services uh amriel's power but i am searching for bria have, have you seen her um yes i know where she is i i had a location i do a gift for her i was hoping that you could <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure I can. Do you know, it's because I've been watching the... Um, it's on been... now as the Empire Strikes Back. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was it saying. That's so what new. I was watching. <laughs> <laughs> I had it in my brain. <laughs> Big flower. Big flower is a young woman. I think not. I, I just love I just love the bit when he says, your tom-tom will, will die before you get to the eight, uh, the the first marker. And then he says, then I'll see you in hell. You know, and I'll yeah. think, uh, off he goes so and so he yes. sort of like says i i know where she is um can i give something to her from you i i was hoping to give it to her myself i saw it in the market and thought it was is perfect for her i was hoping to see the delight in her eyes as, <laughs> I, I, as I, I slip it into her hand <laughs> I'm not too sure whether or not. I, I'm not too sure whether or not I. 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 Uh, it, it would maybe be um against my um employment um code of conduct to reveal her location um to you. Um, have has she been to see you recently at all? Yes. Oh. I was under the impression that she had not left the house. Uh, uh, you know, I think it'd be fine if you if you uh, pass this on to her. I, I'm sure that if she has seen you once um, getting past our um, custodians, then I'm, I'm sure she would be happy to um, see you uh, again. Uh, <laughs> I. The choice is yours, Mr. Bartleby. I could take you, or I could deliver the item to her with your kind words. Um, I would prefer to be taken to see her, if, if at all possible, but I wouldn't want to risk your employment. Oh, no, I think that if she has been to see you, I was not aware that she had even left the house. But obviously, um, she has her own business, and I am but the lonely wagon driver, and um, her custodian. Um, I was given my employment direct by Lord Dryston, you understand. Um, I Hopefully, she won't, um, or he won't be um, disappointed that I let her roam. What it, was it, the streets where you saw her? Oh, no, no, it's it the, the church of Amriel, a, a safe place. Oh, I was not aware of her um, religious beliefs. Um, yes. Sometimes I, it's just pleasant to be in a sacred place, regardless of whether you believe. I'm sure she was in a very sacred place. Um, yes. Um, just, yeah, just... you wait till you know what she came to worship. <laughs> <laughs> Does um, do um, <laughs> do follow uh, me? Yes, and he sort of like leads you through the the streets to what appears to be a a, a moderate sized house. It's it's actually two stories, which as you know in Lindo is quite unique, and it looks like it has no sort of like outside markings on it. It looks quite normal and sort of like nondescript. But at the same time, there's a certain kind of elegance around it. The plinth above the doorway or the shutters or something about the roof. And this it's obviously been um, there for quite a while. And um, the, the wagon driver um, sort of like um, as he goes past um, sort of like says, oh, this is Lord Drainston's um, townhouse um he often comes here in um when there are um, festivals uh, within um, lindo 
Um, it's been in his family for quite a long time, this house. It's quite impressive. Um, yes, many people do say that. Um, nondescript but somewhat elegant. It was actually built by his great-great-great-grandfather. Very impressive guy, I heard. Um, obviously, I have been in his service for some time, and my father before that, and his father. We have grown up in service to Lord Drayston. And he sort of like um, gets at a door and he sort of like says, oh, yes, um, could you just um, uh, look the other way, please? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, and he's, there's a jangling of keys of some description. And then there seems to be a, a click of a, a lock. And then there, there seems to be some sort of like, like that on the door and you hear bolts being drawn back and there's a rather burly looking woman um her apron is tied just below her bust line and she's sort of like uh, sees um um the the coach driver there and she goes oh selwyn i didn't know where you've been come oh you brought you brought guests with you selwyn uh, yes um this is um is it Priest Bartby? Percy, you're muted. Uh, no, no, sir, I'm, I'm just a, an initiate. Oh, he's just of the lower ranks of the... Oh, lower ranks. Oh, wow. Oh, my. We've got somebody from the church here. Well, mercy me. Well, do come in. Don't stay on the doorstep. And Selwyn sort of like comes in. He's here to see the mistress. Oh, well, well uh, she is upstairs, but uh, please, pray, sir, to, if you could uh, just wait in the hallway, I'm sure she will be down shortly. And she sort of like um, lifts up her petticoat slightly and sort of like bundles her way up uh, the stairs, very heavy footed. And you sort of like hear this, um, the um, floorboards creak slightly. And you were sort of like stood there and Selwyn sort of like um, stood there as well. And there's almost like that uncomfortable silence. And he says, nice weather we're having at the moment. Uh, some of the best, Selwyn. Some of the yes. best. I suppose there must be a, a goddess somewhere that is um, blessing us with these mild temperatures. Certainly so, right. though I wouldn't know which. Yes. There's only one goddess. Right. Only one uh, knowing. Um, right, so I, I'll be getting... I, I, I'll go, I hope, I hope the uh, mistress is in fine mood with you. And just as he sort of like leaves and goes off into one of the other rooms, you hear a door um, open um, up upstairs. And you can see the staircase goes up and there's a sort of like uh, a, a balcony up there and the, the woman sort of like comes out um, Nora her name is just so you know um, Nora comes out and sort of like comes to the back of the uh, balcony she sort of like looks down at you and she says I'm the, the Lady Briar like this in her best echoey voice that she could and Briar appears um, in um, normal but pretty garb um, she seems to have a long flowing dress on and you notice that her um, just roll a perception roll for me please all right perception yeah and you notice that um, her hair has been put up rather quickly um, you notice because there's some various wisps of it and she's sort of like um, she she doesn't look um, at ease in the dress there's something slightly off, or maybe about the waistline too high, or the the square top revealing slightly um, too much cleavage, and she sort of like um, gracefully comes down the staircase, and um, one hand on the banister, slowly stroking it as she she comes down, and um, she she waits about three steps from the bottom, and she looks up, and Nora sort of bows and sort of like goes off. And she um, stands there, three steps up, and she sort of like turns her hand and says, 
Oh, you joke. So, Mr. Bartby, you grace me with your presence. Yes, I... I wanted to speak to you again. Um, resolve some of the... Some of our feelings from last meeting. I, I've... Yeah, she absentmindedly strokes the talk around her neck as you mention feelings and she slowly caresses it, elongating her neck as she says so. Is it, are, are her and I in private to talk at this moment or no, Nora's still the, peering down? No, us? Nora and Selwyn are both are gone at the moment. Okay, um, I, I want to say to her, I, I apologize for the way I reacted to you when you came to me at, at night, and I, I when when I when Amriel is out, my my thoughts are often jumbled and confused. She sends me visions, and and I was preoccupied with the threats from our prior adventures. Um, I was worried that I was about to be attacked, and I afraid I was wasn't in the best. You are forgiven, Mr. Bartleby. Pray, take a seat. And you notice that there's a, a bench, like in an alcove of, a, of the wall, that has sort of like what appears to be a cushion, and a, a, a length of cushion on it. And she sort of like gestures to it as she sort of like comes down the, the final three um, steps. Please, Mr. Bartleby, um, be seated. I'll, uh, I'll take a seat. And she sort of like strides over and then plants herself on the other end of the cushion and then just slowly goes and turns and gets a little bit closer to you and gently puts her legs to one side in almost like a mermaid pose. And what brings you here, Mr. Bartleby? Are you prepared to apologise to me? Uh, indeed, that was entirely my purpose for coming here. I, that, that, and I, I saw this beautiful um, uh, object in the market. I'm, I'll pull out the velvet pouch and begin to uh, oh, pull Mr. out the... Oh, Mr. Bartby, for me. Indeed, it made me think of you, and I, I thought you might in enjoy... Um, do I open you... it now, or do I wait? I think you can open it now. I'll pass the pouch to her. She gently opens it. She takes it from you and she opens it. And she looks inside. And she looks up and smiles at you. Mr. Bartleby. I did not know you were one to share symbols of fertility with me. One can only imagine what is going through your mind at this time. As I she, know what it is. She she takes it. Right, and we'll protect and we'll <laughs> What do you Never want? take advice from Hengist. <laughs> she, yes. sort of like, she takes out the uh, the nightingale and she holds it in the branch and she slowly starts to caress over the top of the bird and down its back. Oh, Mr. Bartleby, you amaze me with your forthrightness. But surely, Mr. Bartleby, does your church not decree a degree of celibacy? Indeed, but I still wish to court you, Bria. Oh, and she, her, her finger goes over the top of the bird, down one side and goes, Oh, Mr. Bartleby. <laughs> I am honoured at your advances. I, I must warn you, though, Bria, that I'm about to go on a another dangerous venture. I was hoping perhaps we could uh, embrace. talk more about uh, uh, embrace. Oh, sorry, did I finish the sentence for you? Did you have something else in mind? And she 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 reaches out to you, and she draws her hand across your mask. I can imagine some kind of physical attraction might be difficult as she comes round the little gap where your your lip is, you know, where you talk through it and just sort of like 
it says physical may be difficult and it sort of like clicks her hand <laughs> down it <laughs> do go on mr Bartby. i am flattered <laughs> i i you can roll devotion if you wish <laughs> Just, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and roll devotion. <laughs> see, see what thoughts uh, explode in my head. You just hear a. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned, Mister Bartby, that you are going away. Indeed, and that—that's why I wish to court in a less physical way, at least to start, Bria. Oh, of course. See? But you have given me a gift. Surely it is an opportunity for me to give you a gift back. Is that a gift or gift? <laughs> <laughs> um, Pray tell, Mr. Bartby, what do you desire? That's a difficult question, Bria. There's so many... Oh, I'm sure, Mr. Bartby. She t moves round and there's a rustle of um, linen and cloth. And as she does so, there's a, a whiff of perfume of sweet-smelling roses. And that's just so like you catch on the breeze as it goes past you. I'm sure you can think of. And she leans back slightly something, Mr. Bartby. Uh. Oh, Mr. Bartby, your naivety humbles me. You are so <laughs> new to this. I can imagine the life in the church does not prepare you for such advances. I apologise, Mr. Bartby. And she gets up and she turns around and says, I understand. You want to take it slower. Yes, that, that is correct, Lady Bria. Travel well, Mr. Bartleby, for I will be here waiting for your return. Waiting to advance our relationship one step <laughs> further. I look forward. To you returning to Lindo and Mr. Bartleby. Do not try to escape my advances. I will know when you return. Hopefully, all in. And she just sort of like casts her, her eye up and down you in one piece. Hopefully. <laughs> I will see you then, Bria. Very well. Mr. Bartby, and she bows somewhat and then whooshes her hair off and slowly um, makes her way um, back up. Oh, and she turns up just as she's about to go off the balcony and she says, I will keep this bird close to my heart where it will sing and remind me of your romantic desires and with that she just <laughs> flips away and as if by magic Selwyn a, a, a steps in and says oh so need anything else before leaving no no Selwyn I think uh, I've accomplished everything I need to and he sort of like opens the door and uh, as you walk to the door he says very brave move I have seen many suitors fall at the hands of Briar it's obvious that she has somewhat affection for you. And just between you and I, the fertility symbol, a clever move, a very <coughs> clever move. Yes, you failed the blind woman. <laughs> <laughs> and he... Imagine if you brought her blue flowers. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least they're not... We, we haven't done very well with the commerce skills uh, uh, yeah. at all. 
Okay, so it's it's half past eight. I don't know where the time goes, but um, <laughs> we've had two romantic encounters. One that seems to be going rather a lot better than the um, the other one. It um, depends on who really look at it. Yes. Yeah. What's, your point, what's yeah. your point of view here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody yeah. might get lucky tonight um but yeah. beside that um we will leave it there and take a quick 10 minute break so if you are watching then thank you very much thank you very much for the the bitties that have been cheered and the hosts and etc i really do appreciate it thank you for coming along and supporting the stream we're going to take a quick we'll 10 minute break mm -hmm. so we will see you later on when um hengis and gulliver go down a dark alleyway together to meet a strange man. We I'm me. And Hazra. <laughs> you were the strange man. <laughs> that was me. We will be back in 10 minutes.
press that button and we are back we are back uh mr pickles has gone off and had a cold shower and he is back now <laughs> got a um, bowl of beans uh, is it are there beans yeah, it's probably chili mm. yeah it's chili but it's vegetarian chili so it's just beans yes i'm could be a warm apple pie i got oh apple pie is yummy I love apple pie. Go, um, Medivac, go wash your mouth out with soap. <laughs> is all I can say for that one. Is that rude? Well, he I meant think it in a rude it's, context. I think it's done as a, from a film. It is. He's done it from a rude context. See, I don't know any yeah. of these things. I'm and it's just... one of the ones no. that, that started off funny, but then aren't funny because they did something like a hundred of them. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. About, about ten of them, yeah. Yeah, so, and they're really untasteful now. At the time, they were hilarious, but now you're like... <laughs> so, Mr. Bartleby and um, Miss, Mr. Hengis have had some romantic um, cohesions um, at various places. Martin is still in the bar, looking very sad. But I do believe that um, we are going um, off to a dark alley. To... Well, when... Um, when um hengist and um bartaby are actually gone off and and doing their whatever they've been doing um gulliver wants to take that opportunity to um to because he's left with um hasra mm. and to be honest with you he doesn't have much right. in common with hasra and rather than sitting there silently and just sort of like looking at his plate of um plate of cheese and his um his little glass of um water he, he's going to um he's going to stand up and he's going to um go and sit on the um on the chair next to um hasra and um he's going to say close together and more in a hushed tone hopefully there's there's a fair few um there's a there's a lot of lot going on in the in in the hairy hobgoblin he's in, he's going to say to hasra Yes, my friend. Don't, don't you think it was a bit strange that when when we decided to go and see the fraternity, the all of a sudden a a messenger arrived from them. I, I thought the very same thing, um, Trevor. It it was like almost like somebody is is watching us or listening to us. Mm, I, 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 I I thought the same thing, and and uh, when I've just been here eating my cheese and. I've come up with a plan for tonight. Well, can I can I first say, who did you approach first by the fraternity? Was it was it Martin? Who? Was it the, the, the gentleman behind the bar? He's Basil. Basil, sorry, my apologies. <laughs> He's Basil. He, they call him Basil Earless, and uh, because he he doesn't have any ears, it, it, ah. it got ripped off by by a giant octopus. Yes, but. But that's just an amazing tale. And one day you must tell me this tale. But, but was it him you spoke to about the the fraternity had written to start off with? I ha I asked him what, whether or not he he knew he knew where where about our, we we would be able to store the stuff, and he said yes, the, the fraternity. And he's, he's... Mm. and he seems to have been. He seems to be just stood there looking around. By himself, perhaps he was observing us and listening to our um, I think comments. He everybody, because it's it's his it's his tavern. Mm. But but he he's don't don't don't, don't worry. But, but Basil's one of the the good people. I, I would I would take your trust on this, and let's just chalk it up to perhaps a strange mystery that this fraternity maybe has a way to know when people. Oh, I don't know. It's I still, too I still, I still don't think we've been watched. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was trying to make it some kind of, some kind of um, um, strange thing that, that <laughs> you people do when you, you fling your arms here, there and everywhere. But no, I, I don't know. It's strange. Somebody's definitely watching us, I think. Okay. Um, so anyway, do you want to hear the plan? Yes, yes. Pray tell. Have you ever been drunk? I mean, uh, really, yeah. really drunk. Yes, yes. Back in in, in, in in my tribe, I used to drink. I used to sneak off my parents weren't looking and, and drink lots of goat's milk, which is fermented. It's like a, a very strong fermentation of goat milk. And uh, <laughs> Yes, I've been drunk. And then, uh, yeah, but do, do you know how to act drunk around other people? 
No, it's a pretty... Uh, yeah, I'm mostly... No. Um, um, I've, I've, <laughs> I've seen like Mendes do it. And I, I also saw... Um, Dominic do it a few times, and, and and Owen did it on the on the on the boat as well. When they, they were having one of these conversations, I actually went off and 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 had a swing of Hengis's sword when he was. But don't tell him that. Anyway, <laughs> please, please tell me that that is not a euphemism. No, <laughs> no, that's what actually happened. <laughs> so it's it's very easy. You just. I'm going to, to lose my thing. sponsorship, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> You've got the age racing, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to pretend to drink. Uh, a lot, lot of smarts. You, you've got to be really, really loud. Uh, you, you've got to say things and laugh at things that aren't really funny. And, and if any if any women walk by, you've got to slap them on their head <laughs> and then laugh. Hang on, you I've, just I've, real I've life. seen Hengis do it all the time. <laughs> really? Well, I should certainly try. I don't know about slapping ladies on the on the behind, but I can certainly be loud and maybe over exaggerate my movements yes. a little bit. And and then yes. when you've done that for a bit, you've got to fall asleep. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought the plan would do, be. Do, do, do you mean thought, really fall asleep or pretend to be asleep? Pretend. Well, yeah, but that's the thing. You're going to be to pretend to be drunk. You pretend to be asleep, though, or just fall asleep? Because I can fall asleep anyway. As well, if I show you That's the map, because yes. if there's somebody keeping an eye on us, yes. chances are they're still keeping an eye on us now. That that so, is that is right. So when when Hengist and Bartleby and myself go go to meet the fraternity tonight, by that time you're going to have done the thing where you pretend to be drunk, and then uh, you're going to be pretending follow. to be asleep, and we're going to go. Oh look. He's a <laughs> and we're going to go, but you can see uh, the, the who leaves with you. I understand. Is, you are a killing man. You are a killing man, Gulliver. And then if and then if nobody, uh, you, you can follow behind and keep an eye out to see whether will, anybody is following us. I will protect your back, and I will protect the of Hengist back too. Yes, you are. You are. You are not a boy anymore, uh, Gulliver. You are. You have grown since I've met you. I am proud of you. Have I grown? Yes, you're a little bit taller. Look at the wall. I, I marked it earlier. I don't know. Oh, how, when? How do you know when you're the? When? When? When you've turned into a man? Well, when you start making <laughs> man's. When you start making man's decisions. I, I. I don't. I don't know my age. I'm. I'm uh, an orphan. It's it's all Gulliver. It's all about how you feel in your head. But when your decisions you make are not childish decisions, you are making man's decisions about life. You are you are commanding the way. You are telling me what to do. I would never take orders from a boy. You've got what to know. Just you, um, just I, I don't understand what you're just saying. Just to let you know, you hear three bells. <laughs> just as I like, oh, move oh, this conversation oh, a, on a bit. bit anyway, and then, and then, my friend Gulliver, this lady, she threw herself at me. <laughs> I cannot believe it. No, I must get more drink. No, of course, I'm drink over from the bar. Uh, I'm going to make sure that he's had a look at the map before. Okay. Yes. So we uh, will, I will have had a look at the map. Yeah. Is the idea for Bartby and Hengist to be back in for this? Yeah. So the 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 idea now, this is out of character, is that um, I'm not going to let on. We're not going to let on to them that um, of the plan that we've just made. Okay. So um, Has was going to be pretend that he's drunk, and we're going to say, "Oh look, Has was drunk. He's fallen asleep. We're going to go," and then we're going to yeah. see. And then Has can make a perception roll. Yeah. Okay, that oh, seems yeah. fair. And are all three of you going? Uh, Hengis will definitely be going with, with Gulliver. Okay, and Bartaby? Um, my intention was to make my way back in time to go off with that, whatever Gulliver had been talking yeah, about at lunch. Okay, that, that's absolutely fine. So um, you sort of like um, hear the fourth bell um, ring, so you know it's about time to leave, and um, has to sort of like slumps his um head um down on the um table letting out um a huge um sort of <sighs> like a, yeah birth as well and sort of like wow you know that that's um that's definitely um i'm just wondering um i just because he's not really drunk isn't he no 
Um, so, um, just roll. There's lots of puddles of ale on the mm. floor where he's so, managed to... Yeah, so I can read... ...the content. <laughs> I mean, so, he spilt it down his tunic a little bit as well. Yeah, so, yeah. so that that would change the difficulty value of it. So, um, well, what's double your charisma? Oh gosh, that's really bad. Uh, my charisma fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. Is so, that double? No, so twenty-eight. No. Twenty-eight. No, yeah. no, no. Um, so no, why... no, 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 no. Double my charisma is fourteen. Oh no! Okay, this is better than mine. Okay, blind, <laughs> blind roll, blind roll to me, please. Okay, how do I blind roll again? Refresh my memory. It's explanation mark, B roll, space, B R L L space. Right. Exclamation mark, B roll, space, space. One D one hundred. One D one hundred. And that's it. Just hit it. Enter. Okay, yes. Yeah, so you sort of like, um, you sort of like, um, I look it. I look it. I look it. <laughs> Do you wish to look it? No, I don't know what it is. No, I don't. No, no, I'm just going to roll. It's blind roll. Okay, so you sort of like splash some stuff uh, and you sort of like, um, you sort of like walk out. Um, you know, can you roll for me your perception? Um, just a normal roll for that. You don't need to blind uh, it. That's little me. Right, okay. My perception is going to be. Yeah, yeah I'm drunk. I'm um, really, I'm drunk. Cool, yeah. Um, no, it's all right because you know you, you'll take minutes. It won't be an uh, instantaneous roll. So you you you've done the easy thing. So Gulliver, um, flanked by Hengis and Bartaby, sort of like leaves. We'll probably have Hengist in the front, and then me, and then Bartaby. Okay, that, that's absolutely you. fine. And you sort of like um, head out um, to the um, outside, and you sort of like keep an eye out, um, Hazra, in the um, bar, um, but it. There doesn't seem to be anybody leaving or following them um, at all. Um, but I'll keep the roll until you wish to leave. Um, and then, of course, it will be um, cancelled. So if anything happens, um, you will notice it, you know, um, as yeah. you sit there. Um, so Gulliver and Hengis and Bartaby, you head off to the to the um, alleyway. And if you remember, it's four alleyways down and... You sort of like uh, walk down there, and the it, the the town is you know it it's it's coming in night now, so th some of the um sh or most of the shops are closed up, and there's some um people wandering around with um lanterns on poles, which is Lindo's version of um street lamps, and there's the odd guard um or partners of guard um walking around mm. with um. Count Bastion's um, Jumping Dolphins um, logo on them. And it, apart from that, it seems quite normal um, as you pass any other small tavern or something, you know, nothing as big as um, the Hairy Hobgoblin. They're sort of like noises and every now and again somebody tumbles out onto the street. And you, you get to the, um, the, the alleyway that you... Just to let you know, I'm um, yeah. sorry, I'll, I'll stop there, sorry. Um, I will count to... As high as I can count, and then I will move out after them. Okay, then. Yeah. Um, so you sort of like um, um, get to the um, alleyway, um, Gulliver, Hengis, and Bartaby. And Gulliver, I'll, um, as we get to the entrance of the, the alleyway, Gulliver will, um, Gulliver will stop and turn around to Bartaby and say, What is it, Bartaby? What do you mean? You said Gulliver. I don't remember saying Gulliver, but you just said it then. Did I? You said Gulliver. I don't know what you're talking about. We're just going down the alleyway, and you, you said Gulliver, and I turned around and I said, "Yes, Butterby." I'll, I'll look at Hangus. Did I say? Gulliver? I heard nothing, um, but Gulliver doesn't drink, so he, he can't have imagined it. Has for you, he's going to be, he'll, he'll look up and scan sort of like the roof line and see if there's any sort of like 
people yeah, roll, hearing roll, those roll a perception roll for me. Um, Hazra, you sort of like counted uh, and you sort of like get to the entrance of the, um, yeah, you can't see anything, anybody around up on the top or anything like that, Hengus, um, up on the roof line, etc. cetera. Um, Hazra, you get to the doorway of the hairy hobgoblin. So yeah. you see down and you see that they seem to be having a conversation just at the um, entrance um, to the um, alleyway and you can see Hengus doing that. It's, it's, it's probably best not to say my name, but because we don't want the fraternity to really know who we are. We want to remain as as nominous and not, 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 as hidden as possible. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll make sure I'll, I don't remember saying your name, but okay. now I feel like I did. You, you notice that uh, as the um, light from one of the passing lanterns sort of like shines down the um, alleyway, you, you can see down here, but a little bit of extra light. Um, light. You notice that uh, about halfway down, um, there seems to be um, somebody sat um, covered up with some kind of cloth, um, quite dirty, almost like blanket, um, sat halfway down up against the wall. Um, you also notice that um, he seems to have out in front of him uh, what appears to be a stone um Bowl. You notice that the corridor, the alleyway actually goes straight the way through and comes out the the other side. So it's not like a, a, a dead end. Perhaps we should go further into the alleyway to where it is marked. As, as I come out the pub, I looked and I see them at the alleyway and I want to then just... Take it all in, but then I want to put my fingers down my throat and then I want to force myself to throw up just outside the door. Okay, yeah, you do that quite um, expertly as if you've done it um, before. Yeah, and there's a whole load of um, shouts of, eh, de ah! is that, yeah, is that, that um, sickness, that smell of sick, it's just sort of like wafts in blended with the the smell of um basil's um chili from the night I know a joke about in, that. you know and yeah so um Bartleby and hengus and chokes you're um sorry and um gulliver you're sort of like at the entrance to the alleyway is there a marking on your on the on the map to say how far we've got to go down i think we just go down there's, there's no there's no markings perhaps they're just meters I guess in that case I guess we'll nod and then warily walk down the alleyway okay uh, so Hengus leads the way what uh, Bartleby and, and Gulliver what are you doing I would like to pray <laughs> Um, and I'd like to pray a particular prayer that requires I swing my arms around. So I'm going to uh, hopefully get a little bit away from Gulliver so I don't smack him. Um, this prayer I want to cast is this one. Okay. And big money. Okay, yeah. Um, so um, cross off your uh, magic point. Um, what do you wish to do with it? Um, I want to look down the alley and see if I can reveal anything that's like a, a hidden portal way or actually I don't know if I can do that. I, I, I guess I was hoping to see if there's like any runes or magical magical bits on the walls that might illustrate a super secret fraternity organization. Yeah, got like yeah. a magic lock door. You type in. Yeah, it's coming to uh, uh, Mr. Bartleby. Oh, phew. Is how I'll, I'll, I'll kind of loudly exclaim. Enough that Hengus can hear me. Yeah, so H Hengus, how far are you going down the alleyway? Um, you'll probably go up to a quarter of the way and then see if it, or how, depending on how long the alleyway is, a quarter or sort of like 10, 20 well, steps if, down the alleyway. If you, if you imagine that, think of the corridor, the alleyway as a whole length. The, the, the 
huddle huddle of a shape um, sat down with the bowl in front of them that's about halfway down so you can go halfway between the entrance and and that yeah. if you wish so he'll go a quarter of the way down the alley and then pause turn and to see if the others are following him or not because he hasn't heard any footsteps okay Gulliver's following Hangist. Okay then. I'll follow after I've finished my, my prayer and fuming. Yeah. Okay then. So you sort of like um, walk a, a short distance down the alleyway, then Hengist stops and turns around. And yeah, Gulliver and Bartleby are behind you. Okay. Um, in that case, he will um, say, oh, well, I don't know what we're looking for, but we'll carry on. And he will carry on walking down the alleyway. And when do you, is the idea just to keep on walking until you come out the other side or to stop or what? He'll, he'll stop just short of the, the, the chap sitting in the, in the cloak with the wooden bowl or the bowl outside um, in front of him. And then he'll turn back to Gulliver again. Yeah. So you sort of like walk a, a few more steps. So the, 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 the man that we'll call it a man is sort of like a, a few steps away and Gulliver and Bartleby you um, join um, Hengis as he sort of like inches his way down the corridor down the alleyway sorry and when when you sort of like stop close to this um, the, this guy on the, the floor you, you notice that uh, it, the blanket is actually over his head so it's almost like here and he's holding it like this, and he sort of like appears to be almost like sat cross-legged or G crouched Gulliver down. Will, Gulliver will say to um, look at Hengist and look at the old, look at this huddled figure, and he'll say, "Well, let me guess, Hengist, you've got no silver again when we need it." Yeah. And <laughs> Gulliver will take a, a, a silver coin out of his um, out of his belt pouch, and um, he'll 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 sort of like go down and sort of like pop it into the um um the, the the old the huddled figures um bowl and he'll say try 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 to get some food and and something warm to drink and you you'll you'll, you'll feel better yeah and uh the, sort of like from we, we within the um the confines of the blanket you you that where where you're stood at the moment, Gulliver, you're sort of like looking down so you can't actually see into the um um into into the sort of like beneath the um um the um blanket. Um but a, a sort of like a, a gloved hand comes out and, and you hear a rather um harsh voice um that sort of like says You'll probably need slightly more than that for our services, Master Gulliver. Oh. Oh, right. Well, we we weren't we weren't told how much we would we would need. The the, the person sort of like stands up, and he he's just um you you think he's slightly over six foot. Um, because he sort of like towers over you, but he still keeps his um, his head down so you can't actually um, see his face. And he's um, the voice comes out of the um, the blanket once more, and he says, "A word has it, Master Gulliver, that you wish to leave something with us." Uh, yes, but it's actually two things. Oh. Two things. But they're both very small. Oh. He sort of like holds his hand up. You see, oh. he's got like, he says, oh. we need no information at all about the contents. You will see. And you notice that as he stood up, um, Bartleby and Hengis, you can see this quite clearly now. But um, Gulliver, you sort of like um, look behind him as he saw like signals behind him. And you can see that he was actually perched on on some kind of coffer and he says if you deposit your items within then i can keep them safe for you for a price how, how much well that 
is the bargaining part, isn't it, Master Gulliver? And he sort of like lifts his head up and you notice that he's a quite um, pale but a finely chiselled face and a really uh, almost like pronounced chin and from it he has like a, um, a goatee, a small goatee beard and he has one of those moustaches that curls round and then comes out and it, his eyes almost, Gulliver, seem almost like cat-like they they seem to be taking everything in instantly has um has gulliver does gulliver recognize him from it's, maybe no. tavern or anything like no, that no it's nobody that you've seen um before at all he says how how long do you wish us to keep these items for you master gulliver um i i i, I think I think a full full cycle of the moon to begin with, and then maybe more after that. But yeah, I would need somewhere to to do, if if I need you to keep them for longer, then to 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 provide more more money. Well, I am sure in the beginning, an appropriate donation, and he signals down to his. Um, his sort of like um, wooden plate that you put the um, coins in that will keep us tied over until we can meet again and then the final pavement could be um, fulfilled um, Gulliver wants to use um, insight when you ask these next um, okay cool um, he wants to say Forgive me, but I'm I'm pretty new to all all this stuff. Not normally, when I want to keep something safe, I I hide it underneath my cot or or or, or under a bush. Just um, think of it as the same way of hiding things, Master Gulliver. However, oh, I, I I appreciate that, but but when I hide something under the cot or under the bush, I I don't need to pay to pay silver to to do that. So you have me at a disadvantage because I, I've. I've I've no idea how how, how much to, how much a a, a contribution would to to make. As previously mentioned, Master Gulliver, give what you can, and the final payment. You do not know how long before you return. You know, if you pay now, the outstanding um, balance can actually be um, corrected once you return and you wish your belongings back is it okay if i have a quick chat with my, my friends oh friends how very droll of course but please this cold night air does nothing for my bones oh we, we, we won't we won't be long and uh, there will sort of like go a couple of paces off um hengist and bartabia and myself and Gulliver say, how much do you think I should give? Perhaps we should use the deposits given to us for this next um, quest as a down payment. All of it? Yes. That, that, that does seem a lot. Even, yeah. even Hazra Shep, because he's not here to ask. Well, we can't take his, but I'll put mine up for a uh, for our down payment. Oh, I'll yeah, use my share. part of it as well. You could say that we lost houses. <laughs> I I don't know if I could say that to him. He has, I can't hurt that in. It's agreed then. Four hundred. But yes, and we can tell Hasra. I'm sure he won't mind that we've used it because, after all, it's the four of us have the responsibility of looking after it as well. Okay, so um, after the discussion, um, Gulliver will go back to the um, to, to to where the the the, the person is standing, and um, after collecting, well, we we probably still have it in just one pouch. The yeah, the, I think the, that's the, the deposit. Um, he'll he'll um, he'll hold out his hand um, to hand it to the. Um, to the person and as you do that 
um, the person looks at you in the eyes and then just goes Drat. and looks down at the the bowl. He'll put the... I wanted him to reach out so that I could check his, <laughs> his forearm. Um, <laughs> Never. No. You should have had to make a roll or something. It's automatic reaction. Somebody holding out a bag of money, you just go like that. And be, I, I right, think. I'll, I'll I, I think. The, I'll pop it in the bowl. Yeah. There's no need to mm. justify your actions. It's okay. I was. I was about. I wasn't justifying them. I was just about to say, um, because you drop it into the bowl, there's been no transaction. Oh right. You are donating to okay. a needy person. Does the Does the guy turn around? For when I'm putting the stuff in the... Yes, he does. He sort of like says, please be quick. This cold air is doing nothing for my tender loin bones. And he sort of like um, huddles the blanket round and he, he literally quite happily turns his back on all of you. Um, he seems so... quite safe to do it. Mm. Yeah, almost like confident. So, so, so Gulliver will, will take off his backpack and he, he'll open it up, and out of it he'll take this, the small coffer that has the um, has the seed in. Yeah. And before he puts it in, he'll he'll make sure that the the catch on it is still. Yeah, it's still quite solid. And he, he'll he'll look because uh, I, I, I uh, Gulliver's seen um, Barter be using the witch site before, mm. and he probably knows the spell casting for it he, he'll he just sort of like look up at Bartleby I'll look back and having heard nothing from him he'll just he'll put it in the he'll put it in the chest in the okay. thing and then he'll do the same with the um, Bernard the egg the the stone mm. the artifact I and putting the seed into the chest is quite easy. Putting the egg into the um, chest is not so easy. Um, and you sort of like go to um, pop it um, down. And you, just as you go to put it in, you sort of like, you for that split decision, you um, think, is this r the right way to do it? Um, just roll your um, willpower for me. And you sort of like think for a moment and then think, no, that's right. And you, you pop it into the um, it, into the um, coffer and you, you close the lid. And as if, as the lid closes, um, you notice um, that the guy turns around and says, it's been pleasure doing business with you, Master Gulliver. And um, how, how do I contact you if, if we need to extend the period of the time that it's it's been held? Don't worry, or, Master. Or I want it back. Once you are in the confines of Lindo, we will know your every desire. And he sort of like reaches down and picks up the um, the chest and sort of like wraps his um, cloak around it. And you notice that as he does that, the, he picks up both the, the bowl and the, the bag of coins as well. And he says, when you want it back, we will be aware. Until then, please be reassured that your items are safely with the fraternity. Safe travels, Master Gulliver. And he sort of like gives almost like a mocking bow although he doesn't break eye contact with you as he does it and he walks out the other end of the alleyway so he doesn't pass Hengis and Bartleby he goes uh, the other way and almost like turns a corner and then and disappears and that's it he's gone Gulliver will turn to Hengis and Bartleby and say as usual I've had to pay more I had to give him an extra silver <laughs> I was worried there, Bartleby. I was worried that that maybe the the magic of the sometimes the the coffer leaks, and the 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 power of the of the seed flows through it. But you reassured me before I put it in. Thank you. 
Oh yes, rest assured, I see nothing magical in this alleyway except for you, Gulliver. Cool. Okay then. So, with your business finally concluded um, in um, Linda, you s the next morning after uh, a nice rest, you you set off um, once again um, to um, embark on your um, adventure. Now, uh, you should be on the map at the moment. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. yes yes yeah so just to let you know your um your horse ride will take you from lindo here oh there it is it's done yeah um until this bridge here this is the um the furthest you've been down this road um that's slightly after the um the location of the farm and the haunt that you encountered um, mm. there and you it seems to be that this is the the right um direction um to head off and is, the, is the river on this on the left hand side it's on the, the uh, as you go up it's on the uh, right side of the right side. Uh, the yeah. forest side no no sorry the left side yeah right. it runs um this side of the road if that makes sense, yeah. Um, so the first thing you need to do is that we need to see how well you're riding. Um, so um, off, off you go if you'd like to roll um, your um, um, riding um, skills. Before Gulliver even gets on his horse, he wants to pet it for a bit, and then um, he wants to take out half an apple from his tunic, and he wants to he wants to give it to the um, to the horse. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Has real tight on the cinch and um, and make sure everything's fine and uh, yeah, excellent. So roll um, your um, riding skills. Uh, off topic question: uh, Since Hasra, we rested, sorry, hang on, Hazra, you need to take your fatigue off. <laughs> no, he's it's, he's over encumbered. Are you over encumbered? Yeah, two two grades hard, mm. two, two encumbrances. He's got yeah, because, because my horse has not taken the grain. Seven. By seven. We changed my equipment so the grain's carried by the horse and the saddlebags. Okay, cool. So, well, you can roll it again now, Hazard. Sorry, um, somebody right. else was saying something. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was... failed his by seven. Yeah, no, I thought Bartleby was saying something. Yeah, I've, I've, uh, because we rested, would I be able to get my magic points? Oh, yeah, ma both your magic points for you and magic points for Gulliver will be up to maximum. But luck points, remember, do not... They go via sessions, um, not via anything else. Oh, good grief. Uh, sorry, who who asked for these? <laughs> <Also>? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you wish you had an apple now, don't you? Um, has Why is uh, Butter Nubble so crazy and wild and free? I'm just waiting for Hazard to roll his. He's <laughs> still over encumbered. I'm still over encumbered. That, that's weird. I've I've put it rather than on the mount. Have, I've you, put it, have you got I've your put... silver? Have you got all your silver down on your sheep? Because that oh, yes. will make you over encumbered. And you need to take a hundred off because we spent it. Yeah. So three nine two. Okay, but I shouldn't still be quantity. Mm -hmm. We'll three, try, try again, nine, and then if two. I can. If you look at your incumbents, it just said, should say carry and load normal. If it says anything higher than that, you encumbered. Okay, where's my encumbrance? Encumbrance. It's underneath your strength. See, mine says encumbrance one grade harder still. Yeah, because yeah. you're carrying. Um, um, 28 point now you're down to 23 no that's a quick pack oh hang on maybe it's because I've not put all my stuff in my pack sorry load out backpack load out pack in my pack in my pack in my oh that's on me that's load out and pack yes, we're going to have to do equipment sorry my apologies everybody hello it's all right. Um, no, it's still one great harder for some reason. Even though I've put my... Okay, just uh, let me go into your couch sheet. Yeah, please. Yeah, I put it as camp for my <laughs> other ones. <gasps> oh, my God, that magic. What have you changed on your couch sheet since last time? I've replaced what I've already got, apart from I've added 21 days of um, 
of food rations rather than just three lots of food rations. So that's going to increase it by what? Uh, um, seven days is. One. It's three. It's three. Yeah. Right. So that's going to have increased it by another two. Did you add any money on? Uh, my money has now gone down to three nine two. Have you put any? Have you put armor on? No, my armor's been the same. Okay. The difference I've added was um, the fodder and the... Um, we'll just put the fodder underneath the note. Take it off your equipment and put it underneath the notes. Well, it's on the equipment. All I can do is I can just, change, I can just take the encumbrance off. Yeah, just take... Um, oh. Saddle bags and the encumbrance. But I've changed it to camp rather than on mounds or vehicle. And if you put it onto mount or vehicle, does it alter the... That's still medium. No, you. It should, yeah. If you put it on mountain vehicle, it's it on the horse. Not than... count it on, in your encum mm. encumbrance. Let me just do one quick thing and do that to that, and then that to that. That's better. yeah. That's fine. Yes, yes. It was the water, water. and the twenty-one days of food. Yeah. Okay then. So now roll um, your ride. Sorry, man from the steps. Yeah. <laughs> um, feeling, no, no, no. Fe feeling off. very, very sure. He's, he's checked the scent. He's checked everything. He he wants to um, go to Bradley. He knows something's wrong. So he's gonna he's gonna re-roll that if if that's okay. I use the point of point of look. of look. Yeah. Because he knows uh, something. Uh, yeah. Quite so you right you saw sort of, like set off and think that's not. You saw sort of, like get off and you adjust the thing. Yeah. So uh, right. as as is anybody else re-rolling? I won't re-roll, I don't think. No. No. Okay. Then. So of course he's like Gulliver. You're you're sort of like um, <laughs> you do as well. You're sort of like ride. Um and what I'm going to do is say so throughout the travel time to the next point of location that I'm going to talk to you about, um, that ride roll is going to do that roll. So just to let you know, um, as you're going along, um Hasra is sort of like nobly you know cantering or walking on his horse and and um gulliver you are as well and you're quite straight back and you know every now and then when you have a nice canter you're doing a riding trot that you're just sort of like going up and down um and when and hengis and bartleby you're sort of like going bang bang but it's all like knocking all over the place <laughs> uh, as you uh, as you're coming through and th this actually means that um when you get um to the final place that you're going to um, both Hengis and Bartleby you will actually have two levels of fatigue um, mainly because of your rough driving riding but then also you're not sleeping well at night because of various sort sore parts um, of your body from whacking um, into it and Bartleby you do uh, try to cast you know your um your anti-fatigue spell as i call it at various points but when you actually arrive at the place that i'm about to talk to you about that you haven't cast it for that day because it, it's coming to the end um, of the evening and it as evening and dusk actually falls you're you're about i'm just going to mark on the map whereabouts you are you're about here can you see that? Mm -hmm. And you come across um, a small hamlet. So between the bridge and this point, there's been scattered farms at mm. distances. As you get further and further and further and further away from the um, contaminated part of the field can you remember where all the fungus growth was i was going to ask about that as, yeah. as you oh, sort of, yes yeah as you sort of like travel further and further away um a couple of days travel from this and you notice that it slowly fades out and then it's almost like goes back to normal um harvestable um fields and you know and the crops seem to not be too good here they don't seem to be growing um wheat it tends to be some kind of root vegetable maybe turnips or something like that but yeah and you notice that the farmsteads don't seem to be um as as productive or you know it, it's definitely this area is definitely on um rough times 
and you you notice a, a small um, hamlet um, up ahead of you and when I say small hamlet it's literally a few buildings along the road and as you get close to it there's a there's a sign on it that says it proclaims it as good wool or one word g double o d w double o l good wool and there seems to be um some there seems to be um almost like uh, an inn um that seems to be called um the the lamb and plow and there seems to be some kind of um shrine there um Bartaby. It, it's definitely some kind of a shrine um not a church uh, there's various sort of like offerings uh, around it and then there tends to be some uh, a couple of sort of like more substantial houses um you sort of like assume that these might be for the the people who live constantly in the um small hamlet in all in all there's only about um four buildings on either side of the road um the the lamb and plow has a stable next to it there's a shrine there's what seems to be some kind of store that seems to have various um it's like leather goods etc um outside and there's then there's sort of like uh, what appears to be um what you assume is probably the mayor's house or the chieftain or whatever of the hamlet there there's very few people around at all but there is light um growing glowing sorry from the um the um the tavern the um lamb and plow yeah uh, what would you like to do um on on our because we've been a couple of days two or three days oh traveling easily so yeah um gulliver wanted to suggest to to hasra mm -hmm. um when we set off that um it might be a good idea to um for him to double back occasionally and just to make sure that we're not being followed as we as we leave um lindo mm. yeah um, just, to, just to keep a, an eye out just to um especially with gulliver hearing somebody earlier or, um you know when we were still there mm. just before we went into the tavern um so that that's one thing, but as we get to where we are, and it's getting dark, I suppose. Yes, it is, and it's um, probably a good place yeah. to go over. Said, well, but rather than camping in the, by the side of the road again, maybe maybe this would be a good place to 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 rest the night. We might even be able to get some of that 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 go that silver that we um, that we had to use to secure the um, the items back. That's true. We may get news if if we are on the the tail of those uh, of the two thieves. We may be able to get news of them here as well if they've stopped this way. Is it agreed then? Yes, uh, I, I agree. My my horse could do some rest. All this doubling back is uh, it does tire the heart. the horse out? And my back could do with a nice rest as well. <laughs> Hengus says, yeah. like passing. You need to. You need to go. Move with the right. horse, thing. Just move with the. Be one with the horse. It it doesn't look much of a place, mate. It's probably just a single common room. Well, Has to be better than sleeping room. on the ground again, there. A, a cot, yeah, a cot's better than a. Is it agreed then? Yes, a, a, a nice ale and a nice warm fire. Okay, so, so the, yeah, go. On. Yeah, so so the the plan is to go and um, go to the the goodwill. To the lamb and to, plow. To the um, lamb and plow, yeah. yeah. So the town's called Goodwaller then. It's yeah. the lamb. So you, you sort of like um, tether, take your horses to the little sort of like lean-to stable and there's a like a, a stable hand there who takes, you, you know, looks after it and sort of like um, says that you can pay um, within the, the lamb and plow. And you, you sort of like go around and it's one of these places that you open the door and as soon as you open the door, everything goes quiet in in the um, in the main tavern room, and you sort of like look around, and everybody does sort of like it's a, it's a sort of as if they were on 
tender hooks. And when you came in, it's almost like a... And then they, they look at you and then gradually they just sort of like go back to what they're doing and there's a, a, that murmur of the um, the the actual um, tavern um, starts up again um, as, as you sit there. Um, and Bartaby, can you make for me, please, a, a law history role? Absolutely. Um, yeah, uh, as, as you go in, you you notice that from the the um, the tavern sign, it actually has a faded picture of uh, a sheep and a plow on it. It's very faded, but you also notice that there's two um, what appears to be two runes on them and on it, one in the bottom left hand corner, and one in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, and as you look at it, you you just sort of like think, oh, how strange is that? You, you've never seen runes on um, a sign before. And they quite contrary to the actual um, wood and the, the picture of the lamb and plow. Um, these seem to be still quite prominent and sort of like um, there. You know, they don't seem to be faded um, at all. Can I point this out to my fellow literate, uh, Gulliver? Uh, yeah, um, Gulliver, you can see them, um, but it th doesn't look like writing. It looks like some kind of... Um, Is it any rune that Gulliver's seen before, like in the um, the runes that were written in the Chaos Mother or the runes that were in the um, where the um, Fabergé eggs were in the... Oh, yes, the... the no, um, it doesn't look any like... Any of the runes that Gulliver's seen yeah, so far um, in... It, it it's Gulliver's travels. It doesn't it doesn't look like um, <laughs> anything that you've seen um, before at all. Neither Gulliver, you, sorry, sorry. neither uh, you nor um, and Bartby have seen them before. I would have thought you might have seen something in your order, but I, I just think it's odd, Gulliver, that you'd have runes on a on a, on a sign because normally isn't your sign just picture to bring the people in rather than letters or is 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 there a specific room for a, a sheep uh, probably you you think um Bartby, that from your history role um these is more a lot more about almost like like heraldry um rather yeah. than magical runes you think it's gotcha. almost like, um, you know, like four corners, the what might go on to a shield or something like that. Sheep's a really funny word anyway, Bartaby. Don't you think so? I think they're an even funnier creature. <laughs> no, but but if you think about it, sheep, what other one? Deer, moose. They're, they're all funny words. A bow, mate. Why, why, a bow. why are they funny? Uh, I don't know about your new stand-up routine, Gulliver. Um, the the um, barman sort of like comes over and sort of like says, "Evening, kind sirs. Um, how, how can I help uh, fellow travellers like yourself? Not here for trouble, are you?" No, no, we're 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 just we're just passing through. Good, uh, good. Meal, ale, and a room then. Um, room indeed. Um, we have we have facilities for your um your horses outside if you came um or you can pull your wagon in there but we'll look after those for you and i can quite easily add that to the bill at the yes. end of your stay we, we have noticed the stable boy is quite kindly taking care of our mounts good good but, lad but what, what, are, are you experiencing trouble around here at the moment trouble very... trouble no oh, no trouble here at all no. kind sirs okay you seem very on edge <laughs> yeah, and when fine. and when Hazel, when you say, "Are you experiencing any trouble here?" you you notice that several sort of like people look round at you. Can I kick Hazel from under the table? Yeah, well, you just stood in the. Bar. You're not even at oh, the table stood. yet. He's just oh, like, no, no. I'm at the bar and, and I'm talking to this, oh, whoever, this gentleman. It's like he came out to sort of like meet you, yeah. and he sort of like signals uh, to the a table near the the fire. And so I said, please, good sirs, take take a seat. Do, do, yeah. do, do you have any any 
cheese. I'm afraid it's just um, lamb b mutton broth kind, sirs. But there's a minimum amount of gristle in there and it's good turnips. Should do you good for the evening. We're, we're, we're also... Um, we're, 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 uh, Gulliver's going to be watching him carefully inside the world if needs be. Um, we're, we're also going to be um, hoping to meet a, a couple of our, uh, our friends as well. Um, hopefully they haven't already um, passed through. Um, that the, the, the two of them, and he's going to describe Finiel and Lo Laram, yeah, Laram to him. Okay, to see whether or not there's any indication that yeah, and he, he sort of, recognizes a description. Yeah, and you sort of like give the description, and he says, "Oh, nobody like that has passed through this route." And um, will you insight? Yeah, you, um, he is hiding something, um, but it's not about Finial and Laram. Um, he seems as if he's, um, to your keen insight, he seems to be overplaying the, no, nobody like that has come through here. You know, almost like exit stage left. Out of character, when we, um, when we came up to the um, sheep and plough, um, lamb and uh, lamb and plough, did um, the stable boy come out to take our horses, or did we take them into the stable? You, you approached, and he stable? was. Was did we see whether or not there was any of the horses within the stable? Yeah, no, it was completely and utterly empty. It was just oh, him there. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so after um, Gulliver's um, said that, he he um, he he he'll take the seat um at the table that the the um barman the now can i just say it's a very similar Ooh. can we sit at a different table at you, least you can sit wherever you wish it's just to give you a bit so you don't now, have to do i'm not being funny but if martin's here <laughs> well you i'm worried you you can't see now because i've i've done the i'm going to sit at the end of this table we're sitting at a different table, Hasbro. Oh, okay. sorry. It's a, it's a different. It's a different inn. We're sitting it's at a different, different table. inn. Move yeah. it. Come on. <laughs> you said it's in a different place. Yeah. Come on, come down to everybody. Uh, come on, there we <laughs> go. There we go. Where, where's, where's, the entrance is here, isn't it? As normal. The the entrance is here. Oh, so it's the Bartleby. Oh, the, there. Sorry, right. My apologies. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why you were picking, putting some space between us. But yeah. Well. Oh, and uh, th yes. th that just reminded me, um, you, you do notice that you're getting so many weird looks, um, Bartby, mainly because you've got some kind of metal over your face. And, mm. you know, you, you can see sort of like people uh, sort of like looking at you out the corner of your eye. It's a bit like that moment when Magneto goes... T -t -t you know, but you go tap 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 on it, and they sort of like look at you. And when you sort of like whiz round, they just go. It's it's okay, my friends. It's a leper, but he's better now. If you find it here, though, please pass it over. Yeah, and, uh, as you, as you're saying that, the the bar may comes in. He says, "Leper? Is he a leper?" <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's a uh, joke. Yes. And you it's a you joke. you notice all of a sudden. Some people sort of like um, take notice. You notice that a couple of farm hands sort of like make their way out, oh, he, leaving. He didn't, he didn't say leper. He, he was talking about when he had last last seen his family, and he said it was a leap year. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to. I was going to say, ask the game. I was going to say, have you got any pepper? <laughs> Bartleby, pepper. Think, Bartleby pepper. thinks leap year. Do we have a leap? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, and they sort of like bring round what appears to be sort of like four wooden bowls and some, um, there's no spoons or anything. And the the bar, rather busty barmaid sort of like plonks these bow, bowls down that sort of like clatter before they settle. And then um, the, the bar man um, comes over with um, carrying like a cauldron that's obviously been over the, um, the fire 
and it sort of like brings out and flops into each of your bowls and um, sort of like a ladle of what appears to be um, mutton broth with what appears to be a dumpling um, on it uh, as well. Are there dumplings in America? Uh, yes, I believe so. Uh, yeah, that's all right. So it's just made out of um, suet. Suet. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's... Suet? Suet, suet. yes. yes. Um, yeah. It's like um, animal yeah. fat. Yeah. And it's just okay. mixed up... Um, you can make it from flour and water as well. Yeah, yeah, but they normally do animal fat, flour and water, mix it all up, and then just dump it on the top. Um, so it, it's carbohydrate. Sort of underneath and yeah. looking crispy over the top. Yeah. Really nice. This mm. is sort of like, seems to be just dollops of um, a flour animal fat. You might water. also hear it referred to as cobbler. Mm. Cobbler? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cobbler is a dessert. He's a man, no, no, that's a man that makes shoes. A cobbler's yeah. a what, Ty? A uh, like a kind of like a pie except you put yeah. a bunch of brown sugar and stuff on top yeah so we we get we have things like um fruit cobbler which is like yeah. uh, it's almost like scones on the top we used to have coley cobbler yeah well, which is a fish what? yeah which is a, a white it, fish it was like white fish tomatoes bacon and then with these bits of cobbler on top yeah heretics so, so anyway they sort <laughs> of, it they, it looks it it seems hot um, there seems to be, you can smell there's a, a variety of spices in there. And you can see the odd piece of fleshy meat coming to the um, um, forefront, you know, surfacing and then going back down. Even and though there's no cheese, Gulliver's just going to woof it down because yeah. he's, he's been on his horse all day. So Exactly. He's... And as you eat it, you get that... Um, oily, fatty taste in your mouth when there's been sort of like fat on the a lot of fat in it you know and you you sort of like um drink down the the ale that um, or water uh, or water that is given to you yeah hengis will um if Bartleby hasn't got one he'll offer him his um his eating knife so Bartleby can cut up the bits anything that's too big to fit through his his yeah he could mouth. probably just sort of like uh, oh, okay. no i want to i want to use the knife i appreciate <laughs> uh, it though. yeah it's and you not sort of like elegant <laughs> otherwise cut, cut um things up and the the, the bar man comes out uh, the owner of the bar comes over again and says so um kind gentleman how long will you be staying in this um in this wonderful um hamlet of good wool just um, the night is it are you leaving and going on tomorrow morning it, it will it will just be the it will just be the night, yes. Oh, that, that's fine then. Um, do you share or would you like um, individual rooms? I can put up a blanket to partition the room off. That that would be that would be very very nice. You are yes. the only occupants here staying the night, so I'll get Betty to warm up the covers for you before you retire tonight. Do do, do you um? Is there any? Is there any? games that um are taken in in the in the tap room do, no do, we we are hard working what? folk here uh oh. we the but this place will empty soon enough you know early you don't morning have a very large sheep that people roll <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, not that I'm aware of, but I will keep it in mind for the Harvest Festival next year. It sounds like a quite good idea, that young man. <laughs> oh, we were hoping to earn some coin. Uh, no, um, we are a poor place. You know, we are hardworking. We have adequate... Uh, we live in an adequate way he seems as he emphasizes the word adequate so just for <laughs> one night then before you pass on later that is correct sir you are very astute yes i will get betty to warm your beds up and she saw he saw she like bellows across her betty put some coals in the bed eater you know, and they sort of like, um, you, you notice they're these big, like, old fashioned bed pans. So, like, a, uh, a flat, um, like, um, cooking pot with a long handle on, and she sort of like pops some of the coals in it and then sort of like 
goes out the back there there's not like a, a two stories just like an extend room and goes off and sort of slips it in so your beds are being nice and um, warm as as we we finish the um the, the meal um gulliver will, i'll say i might go and go and check on on diddles before we before we turn in i've, I've still got a quarter of an apple left for her that's fair. I was planning on going to see the shrine tonight when Amriel gazes down upon us. I, 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 I would prefer if you all did not go alone. So if if one of us accompanies, if Angus and myself accompanies one of you. The the guy to the top table, you can see him, is called Max. He's sort of like, he, he's been looking over at Bartleby and he turns to you, Hengis, since <laughs> you're the nearest person there and says, Friend had an accident then, or just ugly. Yes, he he he. Ugly. Uh, he, he he was he was attacked a while back and. Um, attacked. He's he's a little bit vain, shall we put it that way? He used to be fairly handsome until he had. Yes, he was mugged. He must be hideous underneath there. It, it's, yeah. it's 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 quite a sight. Um, Think yourself lucky that you don't have to to see it. My friend, he was he was the most handsome man in Lindo, and then he he fell in with a lover's husband who disfigured his face so tragically he couldn't be shown to anybody else. Hengus is going to kick. Um, <laughs> he's like he saw like he turns to you, Hengus, and says, <laughs> "Your friend has a mighty weird accent. Where is he from?" Far away, <laughs> and then oh. Angus was like, "If Hazard goes to say anything again, he will kick him under the table again." Yeah, he says, "You know that face thing? Can I buy them anywhere? I think it looked really good on my missus and somebody else at the table." So, like, gives a huge guffaw of laughter. They, they are quite expensive, my friend. But what you can do is you can do a kick them under the table again. <laughs> This time slightly harder than the two previous times, and at the kneecap. Hey, the, the rats in here are huge. <laughs> rats, he says. Rats. <laughs> Oi, Bert! There are rats in here. And the barman, man, the barkeeper comes over and says, "There be no rats in here." Why? Who's been saying about rats in here? And Max says, "That, that, 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 that over guy there, there drift." <laughs> yes. Dressed in his wife's linen, by the looks of things. With, I know. With, I, I, heard, spear. I heard somebody speak of it over there. He and he's sort of like, like, the barkeeper comes out. He says, we'll be having less of that, young lad. He says, there's no rats in this place. Uh, it must have been you a be careful, Mrs. Mister, or I'll be doubling the charge of your room. <gasps> oh, my apologies. May, may, may my sun shine on your head. And he sort of like turns and walks away and says, bloody foreigners. <laughs> and he sort of like goes back, um, back and the, the barm lady comes, barmaid comes around and clears your um, pots away. And she sort of like um, leans over and sort of like says, um, your, your, your beds are ready. Anything else you need tonight? Gulliver will look over at Bartleby. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and I, I, I'll look over Angust. <laughs> I, I think not, but um, the beds will just be fine, thank you. Please you yourself. Yeah, so the the um, in room is the bar rooms is started to sort of like um, empty. Um, what would you like to do? Gulliver still wants to. Um, he wants to go and check on um, Diddles, and he wants to um, s the the stable boy. What, what was he sort of like, teens or young? Yeah, or? it's all like you. You think he's sort of probably well, a little bit younger than teens, probably about ten, eleven, twelve. He's going to go on the pretense to check on Diddles, but he he he's going to um, he's going to see whether or not he can quiz the stable boy on anybody else who's passed through recently. Yeah, so uh, are you just sort of like asking him outright or what? 
Well, no, he, he's he's uh, so when, when he when he goes um, out, he's going to um, he's going to sort of like go and he's going to pet Diddles and give him the um, the apple. And if the if the um, if the stable boy's there, he's going to ask. He's going to say things like, "Oh, has he has he had enough water?" And then he he'll go on to sort of like say, um, you know. As he worked, as he worked as a stable boy, long does he like working with the horses? You know, how many? And then um, say, has anybody passed here lately? Is yeah, this... well, <laughs> well, more like you know what? Oh, by the way, what, what, what were the last horses that were, were that had come through? Okay, know? so he he seems quite simple in the the intellectual word. Um, reasoning of the word so he doesn't look like um you know he prob if he had a another brain cell they they'll probably double you know he 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 seems to know a bit about horses and the general thing is that there's not been a lot of people down here at all um he says he so like says the majority of his father because it's his father who owns the um lamb and plow um, a lot of their business is from um, the local areas. He he does say something that um, it seems a bit strange, however, and he he all he just lets it slip um, now again, and he uses the the plural um, uh, a plural pronoun every now and again, and says things like you know them and they and. <laughs> You sort of like say, sorry, do you mean the, the people who come around and, you know, so he might have said something like, oh, yeah, it's only that they very rarely come through here. And you sort of like say, sorry, they. And he says, oh, yeah, the, the people who come to my dad tavern or, you know, he is. It, there seems to be definitely this plural pronoun that he keeps almost like quite honestly accidentally letting slip mm -hmm. um Bartaby, you you head off to the small shrine it literally is a small shrine there's um um a, a bowl for offerings and round about it and you see quite um readily because you know you're you're up on the um ethos the um the mythos of the area and this is um uh, a god, a shrine to the god um, Tabris, um, which, if you remember, is the um, it's a he's a very loyal god. Uh, he's rumored to walk around the um, land um, as a white stag or blue falcon, and he frowns on ill treatments of animals. Uh, uh, save the savage, savage and vile, um, and but he's almost like often worshipped for people who keep animals, um, you know, and they sort of like um, say, you know, this this is what they do. They, uh, you know, um, sabris keep my sheep safe for the night. Um, just um, you do know that the um, the thesis of Sabris. Sabris is an old god, a bit like Amriel. Um, you do know that they don't actually um, live in um, um, churches or places of worship. They tend to roam the land, often dressed in furs or things like that. And they tend to be very anti-sociable and sort of like shunning cities and peoples. Um, there are rumours out of interest that... Um, they used to be um, mystics. Um, well, they were called followers of um, Tabris, and they 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 trained in the way of Tabris. And it was rumored that they could actually summon um, the power of beasts um, to actually enhance their bodies and to protect animals and things like that. And some of them, um, some of the thesis could actually do this as well. So it's a very, um, a very rich and almost like primitive uh, way of worshipping, etc. Um, um, yeah, go for it. 
in that case, I'd like to uh, put a donation of five silver coins into the bowl. Yeah, um, they, and... just just so you know, when you look around, there doesn't seem to be any money that's being given. It looks like it's more um, personal possessions or flowers or food or something like that. There seems to be hmm. no coinage there um, at all. And that, then I'll need to. Yeah. That I think Hengist has some flowers. <laughs> oh, no, they went down the back of an alley a long ago. It's fine. <laughs> we probably notice if you had a big bouquet of flowers <laughs> riding along. It might be a bit crumpled by now. Especially blue ones. No, that's why Hengist has been travelling so badly. He's been carrying the vase with the flowers in. <laughs> <laughs> He's been trying to keep that from spilling the whole time. Um... I, I'm I'm gonna pray at the, the shrine, and I'll, I'm gonna think on an item to give, um, an offering to Tabris, since we have animals, and since I'm dressed in full fur armor, um, so I'm gonna do my prayers and, and whatever nightly rituals I would normally do for Amriel. Okay, um, so um, Gulliver, you're still um, chatting up, mm. chatting to the um, stable lad, and um, Bartleby, you're at the shrine, and Hazor and Hengus, you're still in the bar. No. No, no, I would have followed out either Hengist or uh, Gulliver, as I said earlier. Not going to let them go alone. So if, if oh, right. okay, Gulliver's then. only going to go to the stables, I would have followed. Well, that, that's important because Gulliver wouldn't get the information. Yes, that's what I was no, saying. No, no, no. Saying, no. What, I was, yeah. what I was saying was um, if, Bar if Gulliver's going to the stables, then Hang uh, so has already gone with um, with Bartleby. I just kept at a respectful distance, just up the hill, just to make sure he's safe. And proper. Okay, I need to know who you went with. Uh, Bartleby. Okay, why and, don't you come down and pray with me? And uh, hang on, I need to know how far you are away from Bartleby. I would say a, a, a good distance. If he's if he's, I don't disturb him because he's. I know what he's going for. He's, he's, he's commune with his goddess, so I would say twenty thirty feet. Uh, we we work in meters, but I, I, I I'll, 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 I'll say <laughs> that you're sort of like yes, somewhere else on the opposite side of the road. So Gulliver, yes. you can uh, Hengis, are you still in the bar room? Hengis will still be in the bar because he doesn't want them to put somebody else in their room and and that sort of thing. Okay then. Um. So um. It's not Hasra and Hengis that sees this. It's <laughs> just Hengis. And you, um, the, the bar room is slowly emptying now. And you, you get the, um, there's the barmaids are sort of like walking around and sort of like um, tidying up and sort of like picking up the, um, uh, the pots, etc. And the, um, there's literally just you and maybe one other person um, in the bar room when you, you hear the door open. And the reason you hear the door open was that because it wasn't actually open gently. It was actually almost like pushed in and it sort of like went back and, and banged um, the, um, the, the back of the door. And there, there seems to be um, three men um, walking in. They, they seem to be garbed in uh, what appears to be some kind of either supple or rigid leather armour. They're, they're obviously, um, you can see how they move Hengis, that they're not, um, they're not sort of like um, primitive people. They, they almost like look um, battle worthy. You know, okay. the, the way they're sort of like casting the uh, their eyes around. And as they walk in, they, they don't seem to be fearful or anything like that. You do notice that when the door opens, what one of the um, barmaids sort of like um, looks up and drops a whole load of bowls um, on the table. And the, the, the barman sort of like turns around and says, Come on, Mabel, clear that up, clear that up. And he sort of like turns to the um, 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 three men who seems to walk um, over um, to the um, bar. Could you make a perception roll for me, please? Yeah. Um, I was also going to ask if he could see if they've got any sort of like visible weapons or, or her um, sigils or herald yeah. heraldry on them. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Make your perception roll. Um, um, oh, do I want to use my one point of luck? You would have to use it to revelt. Yeah, that's what I mean. But I don't know if I'm going to use my one. I'll use my one point of luck to re 
roll that completely. Okay, cool. Probably not going to do any difference, but no, it does. Um, Thank goodness. Yeah, you, they, they are most definitely armed, and they're not sort of like... Um, they're not bothered about it being... Um, being on open display or anything and they they walk in and there's obviously somebody who's almost like the lead person mm -hmm. here and the other two sort of like hang back um a while a bit but face into the tavern um the other guy's going up to the bar where the um barman is the owner of the bar and the other two are sort of like um perusing around you notice that the other person who was actually in the bar um quickly just sort of like leaves whatever's on the um thing and just sort of like scurries out and the the um the main guy um goes up to the bar man and you you hear the barkeeper sort of like says oh we're, we're about to close but and the the butt is sort of like um cut off and you sort of like catch out the corner of your eye and that the the guy has sort of like reached across the bar and grabbed hold of, of the barman and sort of like pulled him um, very close um, to him. And you can see from where you're um, sat and you're not sort of like, you know, you're glancing or looking at your peripheral village, vision. And you can see that the um, barman is just sort of like nodding um, furiously. And you, you can hear this guy and he seems to be um, using quite short sharp harsh words and you can't actually pick out um exactly what he's saying he's almost like whispering quite threateningly um to the barman and you can pick out the odd word now and again and it says things like um things like don't do it again be warned next time your bar will not be so lucky and things like that, it definitely seems to be a, a threatening point um, discussion. And just as it comes to an end, he sort of like leaves go of the barman and the barman sort of like staggers back. And the, um, the sort of like the, the man sort of like looks round and he, he sort of uh, sort of like looks at what appears to be sort of like the ale tap or something and they the the barman quickly sort of like um pours in what appears to be like a tankard and he sort of like downs it in one go and then he literally just flings the the uh, pewter tankard over to one side he sort of like bashes um and clatters on the um um floor and you notice that the the barmaid once again sort of like um shake and then he just sort of like turns round and he he just says um he turns to the uh the barman and he says he says just remember what i said or she'll be next pointing to the barmaid who sort of like no you notice that she's almost like um shivering and shaking and the the guy the the guy just sort of like turns turns round and he seems to take no notice of you at all mm -hmm. and he just sort of like um leaves the um bar um quite confidently and his two sort of like guards sort of like follow him um out but they sort of like back out of the ta tavern and then at the last minute, just sort of like um, leave. And no sooner as they leave, the barmaid, the, the barman sort of like quickly hurries to the door and shuts it and you, you suddenly um, bolts it um, across. Yeah, what would you like to do, Hengus? Um So once the, the barman's back, sort of like presumably behind the bar, or picking up the, um, the tank that the chaps, uh, that chap's just thrown around, um Hengus will sort of finish his finish whatever's left in his tankard and walk over to to the to the bar and say seems like that was a bit of a, a rough a rough conversation are they are they regulars here you sort of like um he's busy cleaning out um cutlery and everything 
and he sort of like looks at you and says if you and your friends have anything about you I would strongly advise you leave tomorrow morning as quick as possible is there that's that's sound advice thank you but are there are there more of them in is it, I assume there's more than just the three of them and he, he just sort of like turns away and, and carries on um, cleaning as if he hasn't even registered your um, your um, question and at that point Gulliver you probably come back to the the tavern and sort of like knock on the door and the barman lets you in and Hazra and um, Bartaby you probably return as well and uh, Hengus are you relating uh, what happened to them he will but when they're all in the room yeah. he's not going to do it out in the in the tap room yeah so there, there's a like a big dormitory at the back that has sort of like blankets um hanging up and you sort of like um hengis relates um what's happened um in the um tap room um with the three uh, men and that seems to be an appropriate point uh, to leave it um, for tonight. I'm trying to finish at 10 o'clock, Chugga I really am trying to finish. No, it's fine. Yeah. Um, so, yes, yeah, so that seems to be uh, a good place. So we will pick it up tomorrow, um, next Saturday, when you will be awake. OK, if there's anything that you want to discuss before going to sleep, etc., you can do and you'll wake up tomorrow morning and then just let you know um, anybody who's got fatigue will have lost it. Um, look, points, of course, will be refreshed and also um, magic points will be back um, after a, a night's sleep. And then you can figure out what to do um, next time. So before we go, is there anybody else? Uh, any other players would you like to make any announcements at all any streams that are happening or anything like that no no announcements no no mr pickles i periodically have attempts at writing traveler stuff for my own campaign that's not airing we um, want kittens we want kittens. <laughs> the last time we want them. Yeah, kitty, oh. have a kitty cup i yeah it, it was I need to get better camera work, but I, I'll probably be doing that at some point this week. Uh, more traveler, probably less kittens in talk shows and uh, in talk shows and podcasts. I stopped having any D and D work or traveler work there, so I had I couldn't just say it's me doing traveler when there's no traveler. Yeah, this this go for the kittens. Go That's for the kittens. I, yeah. I gave up halfway through. So it's just <laughs> yeah. Any anyone else? I got anything to announce? Okay, cool. Um, if you are interested in the gaming system, the rule system that we play, then please do go across to my YouTube channel. I'm currently in the process of creating a series of videos explaining the game one step at a time. So there's some to do with the overview of the game, combat in Mithras and the spell organization and skills in Mithras as well. Um, the next one coming out is going to be um, character generation. So hopefully you'll be able to put all that um, into context. I will be back tomorrow at um, two o'clock GMT time for some more Elder Scrolls online. And of course, on Monday, you can come along and join me for my talk show or podcast or whatever when we enjoy just some plain old chatting and some good old fashioned quizzes, which are always fun. So do come along uh, to see me then. Until then, can I just say to each and every one of you, please remember to be who you are and say what you think, because the people who mind don't matter and the people who matter don't mind. Have fun. And we will catch you all next week. And until then, happy RPGing. We'll see you all later. Bye. Bye.